Hi friends, and welcome to Playing Tribute to the Ace Attorney series, where we are on the last game of the series. Well, until the prequel from the, in the Switch, but we're not going to talk about that one. This is the final game in the original um, DS and 3DS games. The final game featuring the characters we've come to know and love, including our new attorney, Athena Sykes. Um, but especially Phoenix Wright and Apollo Justice, of course, because apparently this is his trilogy. Um, but listen to the nice soothing music, isn't it nice? We're on Ace Attorney Spirit of Justice, and this one is different <laughs> in the way that things uh, work out, but I just remember whenever I first heard this game was coming out, um, I heard that there were going to be, there was going to be the return of a certain character that did not make an appearance in the last one, even though, well, I guess she kind of made an appearance through a letter. I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about now because it was in the last case of the, of that game, but, um, but yeah, that's what I heard going into this. Nothing else. Um, so I'm just, that's what I'm going to give you. Uh, that we're going to see her again. That's all. Let's start a new game, shall we? Oh, it's going to jump right in. On the western edge of the Far East. Lies a peaceful country of spirit mediums and mystery. The kingdom of Kurahin. But now, the flames of revolution are threatening to consume it whole. But things like revolt and revolution were the furthest things from my mind when I first arrived in this land. Make sure I say that name properly. Karai. Here in Karai, death is not the end. Even after death, the soul lives on in the twilight realm. And priestesses can commune with these spirits of the dead. Fear not death. In the name of the Holy Mother. Fear only the impurities of your soul. As usually, this blight on my soul. As usual, we see the villain. I'll have the child take the blame. As usual, we see the villain of the first case. So that we know what we're doing. <laughs> Kingdom of Karain. I will try to pronounce that correctly. Every time I see it, I will definitely forget. Phew, I'm finally here. So this is the Kingdom of Karain, huh? What a long trip. I wonder how many hours I was in the air. Just look at this place. a load of this street. It really feels like I'm in another world here. And that gorgeous temple. I read that's the center of town. Yes, take all the pictures. Wow! An ox right in the middle of the street. I have to get a picture of that. 
Excuse me, sir. I wonder what kind of bird that is. I've never seen anything like it. That's quite a crest it has on its head. I excuse me, sir. What? Oh, yes? Pardon me, but are you Mr. Wright? Uh, yes, that's right. Oops. Hope he hasn't been trying to get my attention all this time. Wait a minute, are you... That's right. I'll be your guide. At your service. <laughs> uh, I think they've run out of puns, guys. <laughs> they're, they're scraping the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> they've, run out of, they've run out of punny names. <laughs> they're just going straight up and telling us. I'll be your guide. I'll be your guide. At your service. I'm a monk in training. At temp... A temple temple, too. Yeah, yeah, they're running out of funds. And I'll be your guide around town. It's very nice to meet you. Hapir... Hapiraki. H happy what now? Hapiraki. That's how we greet people here in Karai. It's like hello, or how do you do? It's a pretty handy expression to know. Okay, let me give it a try. Hello, I'm Phoenix Wright. Happy Rocky. My name is Phoenix Wright. And I run a small law office. Well, that's what I do back home, anyway. Right now, I'm just a traveler. A stranger in a strange land. Welcome to our country. Welcome to the kingdom of Karayin. Land of spirit mediums and mystery. He's adorable, though. I love him. This is for you! To celebrate your arrival. S speaking of mystery, what is this mysterious green lump in exactly? Allow me to explain. This is a famous Karayanese sweet bun. It's called a magataman, or soul bun. It's shaped like a magatama. It's so yummy, it'll send your soul right to the twilight realm. That doesn't exactly make me eager to try it. Th thanks. I think I'll indulge later. That will be 20 damas. Thank you for your patronage. I have to pay? I always have plenty of those on hand. So just let me know if you ever want any more. I thought it was a gift. No wonder his bag looks so heavy. It's stuffed with all the tools of his trade. Oops, I almost forgot to tell you something really important. It's about Miss Maya. She can't come see you for a few days yet. Yeah, when I called her from the airport, she said she was still training up in the mountains. And she had signal up there? <laughs> yeah, whenever I first played this game, and that was the announcement there, I was like, Aw, oh, man! Come on! <laughs> when am I gonna see Maya again? <laughs> it's been seven years! Well, eight. Eight-ish? Nine-ish, maybe, even? Because we're on s several games past. There are several games ahead there. Um... I told her I'd wait for her here. Either way, I was glad to hear she's in good spirits. Maya Faye. She's a spirit medium who used to work as my assistant. I came all the way out here to celebrate the end of her... Es 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 ascetic training? Yeah. Okay. Like ascend? Ascetic training with her. I'll be. This is my first time in this country, so I'll be. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'll try to get through that without laughing. I'll be. This is my first time in this country, so I'll be counting on you, okay? <laughs> you got it, sir. Please don't hesitate if you need anything at all. Maya was right when she told me I could leave everything in your capable hands. Oh, shucks. She said that? That sure was nice of her. Aw, oh, he's missing a tooth. I had a chance to show Miss Maya around a little bit, too. There's one person Maya was worried about, it's me. Because we both know Trouble likes to follow you wherever you go, she said. <laughs> My girl worries too much. But you sure come early to the, came early to the party, Mr. Wright, sir. I mean, Miss Maya won't be done with her training for another two weeks. Two weeks? <laughs> Ugh, I hate to admit it, but I came early because I was worried about her, too. Oh well. You know, haha. <laughs> I thought I'd get in a little sightseeing first. I think I guess the emphasis was supposed to be I, I was worried about her too. 
Ooh, sightseeing? Well, I'm your man for that. Oh, I was like, is steam coming out of his ears? No, it's coming out of his nostrils. I'll show you all the best sights of this country that this country has to offer. Th thanks, Th that would be great. I guess Albi takes his job very seriously. Well, what are you waiting for? Those sights aren't going to see themselves. Y yikes, you don't have to shove! First stop, Temple to Temple, right there in the center of town. There's something there I really want to show you. I have to fix my voice for him because I'm <coughs> wearing my voice out. <clears throat> You're not supposed to do that when you voice act. If it hurts, you're doing it wrong. It's very pretty. Wow, it's even more impressive up close. Allow me to explain. This is the heart of our town, Temple Temple. It was created by the founder of Karainism. Karainism. <laughs> The Holy Mother, herself! I'm training right here at this temple to be a monk someday. I read that the people of this country are all adherents to Karainism. I have a feeling that word's gonna come up a lot. Karain. Karain is the thing, so Karainism. According to my guidebook, it's a religion in which ancestral spirits are venerated. The Holy Mother was a great spirit medium who could commune with our ancestor souls. And spirit mediums became become queen to this day. Okay. And spirit mediums become queen to this day. Direct descendants of the Holy Mother. The spirit medium rolls the entire country, huh? Talk about power and influence. The main thing you'll want to see when you come to Temple Temple is the Dance of Devotion, right? The Dance of Devotion takes place twice. Once in the morning and once in the afternoon. This dance, along with the Song of Ceremony, is performed in offering to the Holy Mother. The Dance of Devotion has the power to summon- Oh gosh. Oh goodness. Mm -hmm. Ho hold it! Slow down! I can't remember all of that at once. Oh, I'm sorry. I guess I got a little overexcited. Anyway, the main thing I got from all that is that you really, really love your country. <laughs> well, that's sure true. I like this kid. He pours his heart into everything he does. Let's see. I guess I just explained about half of what I usually explain. So I'll give you a special discount and only charge you ten dollars for the tour fee. Thank you for your patronage. He keeps springing this on me without telling me it's costing me stuff before I take things. I guess he pours his heart into aggressive salesmanship, too. Come to think of it, Miss Maya told me she could tell I love my country, too. We stood here for about an hour while I told her all about the Holy Mother. Really? An hour? Hope that counted as patience training. And she seemed really interested, too. She listened to my whole speech. Huh. That doesn't sound like the Maya I know. Miss Maya is so kind and nice. She treats me really well, like a little brother. She's kind of like a big sister to me. This is Maya Faye you're talking about, right? Maybe she's grown up since I last saw her. What's the matter? Is it that time already? We have to hurry into the temple right away! But first, let me give you the lyrics card for the Song of Ceremony I told you about. There's an English translation of the lyrics there too, so give it a read, okay? Let's go! B but why the big rush? If we don't hurry, we'll miss the beginning of her, benevol ben wow. her benevolence's dance of devotion! Her benevolence? Yep, that's what I stumbled over.
be your guy. You're under arrest for treason. That was an interesting side eye at the end there. What was that? <clears throat> let me in! Why won't you let me in? Because you're a foreigner. What business could you have with this court? I told you my friend is on trial in there. Police raided the temple in the middle of the dance performance yesterday and arrested Albi on suspicion of treason. I was worried about Albi, so I just had to come see his trial. The trial is a tourist attraction, so clear off. If you want a picture for your scrapbook, take one with me and get out of here. Look, you've got it all wrong. Discreet. Well, I guess there's only one thing to do. I'm not gonna tell him I'm Kyrianese. I want to be in the court. Yes, I'm a foreigner, but I'm not your average foreigner. What? I'm actually a lawyer. In fact, home, anyway. What? A lawyer? I can't... That's not possible. What's he so shocked about? Well, whatever. Now's my chance. Nothing wrong with a lawyer entering the courtroom, right? But wait! Get back here, you! This is a Karainese courtroom. Wait, isn't that her benevolence? What's she doing here in court? The divination seance has been performed. I will now hand down my verdict against the accused. Ah! No! <laughs> Hold it. <laughs> Somebody scream objection. What? A verdict already? But the trial only just started. Guilty? There's gotta be some kind of mistake. Please take another look. Seances performed by Princess Rafa are invaluable. They show only the truth. What right do you have to question her abilities? But I... I didn't... Isn't it ironic that you, a devout adherent of the Karainism, would dare doubt her insight? <laughs> Non-believers will only be met with suffering in the Twilight Realm, you know. But... I didn't do it! Your benevolence, allow me to explain, I beg of you! Be silent, impudent whelp. There is no merit to be had in indulging the ramblings born of a criminal's unclean soul. But... What in the world is going on here? The judge made his ruling based on something called a divination seance? What is Alvi's attorney doing? Wait a minute. Where is Alvi's attorney? Why is this happening? I didn't do anything wrong. Foolish child. Doubting the divination seance is tantamount to doubting the Holy Mother herself. Your Majesty, as Royal Priestess and in the name of the Holy Mother, I command you. Impose the highest penalty against this unclean soul. As you command, so shall it be done, Your Benevolence. May Her Holiness grant us her divine favor. Er Dihara Kurain. Dihara. Er Dihara. Objection! Thank you. <laughs> I was waiting for that. What? <laughs> Wait just one moment. Y your. Uh. Me and my big mouth. Now what? 
Mr. Wright? What are you doing here, sir? Well, I'm in it now, so I have to do this right. Your Honor, it's too soon to give your verdict. This trial has only been underway for a few minutes. I excuse me? Who on earth are you? I'm, well... An ordinary tourist, Your Honor, just passing through. Ah, oh, a tourist, are you? Happy Rocky. Ha Happy Rocky. But more importantly, where is this boy's defense attorney? Defense? Attorney? <laughs> Whatever are you talking about? He doesn't need a defense attorney. Wait, what? Of course you wouldn't be aware of being a foreigner at all. But uh, we have no need for defense attorneys here in the kingdom of Karain. We leave it all up to her benevolence and sacred power of spirit communication. Her divination seances determine all. What? But surely you see how unfair that is. What kind of insane court system are they running here? You would dare mock me, you barb-headed buffoon. If you value your life, you will leave post-haste, or I shall summon the bailiff. Or shall I summon the bailiff? The bailiff is that big scary dude with the big scary gun, isn't he? I'm sure he would be happy to oblige you with a bullet or two as a souvenir for your travels. This <laughs> girl. At the cost of an arm and a leg, no doubt. Now hold on! Mr. Wright has nothing to do with any of this! Albie? I appreciate what you're trying to do, Mr. Wright, but never mind about me. You just go ahead and go see Miss Maya. But... Forget about me! You have to go now! I'm sure you can find another guide. There were lots more places I wanted to show you. But it looks like I won't get the chance now. I'm sorry. The poor kid. He's trying to put on a brave face, but look how terrified he is. What can I do? What should I do? Defend him, of course! I love this, like, fake choices that we have. Like, what would happen if I just said, Oh, let's go find Maya. <laughs> I can't just leave a verdict to be handed down with nobody standing in Albie's corner. If Albie doesn't have a defense attorney, then I'll do it. I'll defend him. D defend him? You can't be serious. Did you hear that? Is he out of his mind? Heaven forbid. Defend me? Mr. Wright, what are you saying? You can't do that. I most certainly can. Don't worry. I'm quite used to tackling all sorts of trials. Besides, can you imagine how furious Maya would be if I let anything happen to you? Mr. Wright! You are but a naive tourist, ignorant of our ways. But if you are smart, you will heed my advice. Do not pursue this matter any further. Looks like defending somebody is easier said than done in this country. Faith, throw this man out. Your Majesty, if you please. You have something to say, Mr. Payne? <laughs> Why not allow it, Your Majesty? Why not have him defend the accused? It could prove very interesting. Right, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Right, Mr. Whoever you are. <laughs> right, because he never remembers him. <laughs> and prosecutor, are you acquainted with this traveler? He shines. I love how his whole body shines. <laughs> like his whole thing. <laughs> Not just the crown or like a ring or whatever. <clears throat> That's Chief Prosecutor, Your Majesty. And yes, I am acquainted with him. He's a defense attorney from my native land. I've had dealings with him in the courtroom before. Heavens to Betsy. What? Mr. Wright, you're a, a defense attorney? Did he not know that? A defense attorney? Well, well, this is a shock. You may be surprised to hear that I have more than ten years of experience. I guess there aren't all that many lawyers around here. Your Majesty, would you kindly allow us to proceed in the manner of my old country? Uh, but, Mr. Payne, I've already made a ruling in this case. <laughs> 
call it nostalgia, if you will, but I'm most eager to give it a try. Hmm. But I have a previous engagement, you see. A class together with the missus. Your Majesty, I agree we should have a whack at it. That sounds amusing. A score of years have passed since we last saw a defense attorney in this court. Courtroom? A score? As in 20 years? What's the deal with this country? That staff reminds me of that, um... The staff that with, with the bells or whatever on it that the, um... The demon bird had in the last game. Mr. Payne, I want that barbed head brought to me on a stick. As you wish, your benevolence. I, Chief Prosecutor Payne, will see to it myself. Very well, Mr. Payne, if that's what you and her benevolence want, I will acquiesce. As for the defense, I hope you are prepared for every eventuality. Every eventuality? What is he talking about? There, are you satisfied now, Mr. Wright? Yes, thank you, Mr. Payne. And sorry for not remembering your you earlier. <laughs> yeah, you might think it's strange that uh, Payne is is gunning for us here, or or helping us here. Um, but <laughs> I won't say anything. <clears throat> That's Chief Prosecutor, or the Incredible Payne, as I'm also known in this country. And you'll see soon enough just why that is when you're forced to capitulate to me before this very court of law. <laughs> He's so strangely confident. Not only that, but through the gallery. Just you watch. That defense attorney will try and twist the truth. You can bet on it. Get him, Chief Prosecutor. Crush that defense devil. This is way more lawyer hate than even back home. Now, if you would please give your opening argument once again, Mr. Payne. We thought the Dark Age of the Law was bad. <laughs> bad court publicity. Certainly, Your Majesty. The accused is charged with two crimes, larceny and murder. Yesterday, the Founder's Orb was stolen from the treasure room of Temple Temple. In addition to theft, two other things were discovered in the treasure room. The dead body of Mr. Pa Patrol. Patrol. Right, Pat Patrol. <laughs> Temple security guard, and the empty treasure box that housed the orb which Mr. Roll was in charge of guarding. We believe that Mr. Roll was murdered by the thief who stole the treasure. To kill a guard armed with a gun. What a terrifyingly bold act. I couldn't agree more, Your Majesty. Please allow me to submit as evidence the victim's autopsy report and crime photo. Get my court record now? Hmm, it's been a long time since we had evidence presented in court as well. Not ah, tutorial. <coughs> Excuse for tutorial. It's kind of refreshing, actually. Haha. <laughs> we may rely on the power of the se seances, but our palace. Wow. He almost said sciences. Yes, the power of the sciences. We may rely on the power of the seances, but our police still carry out investigations. <laughs> Thus, any proof I provide is indisputable! Oh, really? Well, forgive me if I don't just take your word for it. I check the evidence out myself, then I'll leave them in the court record. We'll see just how thorough you and your police were, Mr. Payne. scientific. I wonder what that scroll is. Also, is this hand covered in blood? Hmm. Such a deplorable crime. The audacity of stealing the sacred treasure of her holiness. Our founding mother. It's a crime that strikes at the very heart of our nation. Exactly, Your Majesty. We mustn't let the culprit get away with these heinous deeds. 
Indeed, such deeds are best described as treason against the crown. Is this treasure really such a valuable object? How can you even ask such a thing? Of course it is. Why, sealed within its treasure is the very soul, the mitama, mit mitama of the Holy Mother. Her soul is sealed within the treasure? I think I'll take that with a grain of salt. Yeah, as much as Amy's soul was in that urn that kept breaking. Uh, you don't believe it, do you? Uh, of course I believe it. Something tells me I'd better play along. This kind of irreverence is exactly why I dislike defense attorneys so much. Your Honor, uh, Your Majesty? What is it now? This treasure. I've never seen it, so it's a little hard for me to imagine. Could I see a photo of it or something? Of all the outlandish requests, your defense attorneys are truly beyond the pale. I really don't think it's defense attorneys. I think it's just because I'm not from here. <laughs> like, give me a break here. <laughs> it's beginning awfully angry with me, and are those veins popping out of his forehead? It's forbidden for anyone outside of the royal family to view the treasure itself. They say if, that anyone without the proper spiritual power would be blinded instantly. That's why the average person has never seen the treasure, Mr. Wright. I guess there are national treasures that are off limits to the public back home, too. For the benefit of the shamelessly uninformed defense, let me share this newspaper article. It includes photos taken about eight years ago when the treasure was unearthed. These are the only public photos of the outer box in existence. What was that about a butterfly? When lion, when tiger fights dragon, the butterfly comes, embraces the mitama. The favor of the orb is bestowed. So it's it's telling us how to open the box, right? Like that's that's very clear. What's more, the treasure box only leaves the temple's treasure room but yet once a year, for a special New Year's rite that takes place at the palace. Therefore, this treasure box has only ever been seen by a handful of people. Okay. I hear there's been a strength that's lately at historical artifacts from the tre- Wow. Of historic artifacts from the temple. Write your majesty, inexcusable thievery of precious national treasures for personal gain. And the culprit is the accused. So he used his position as monk in training to get his hands on the treasure. Is that it? The accused family is by no means wealthy. To help with family finances, he worked as a tour guide in addition to his ascetic training. Ascetic. Not aesthetic. Ascetic. Thank you for giving us an excellent outline of the case, Mr. Payne. Now, no more questions from the defense, I presume? What? I know, I do have questions. Even more, but you just asked a bunch. Well, make it snappy. My class starts in just a few short minutes. What? He's still planning on going to that thing? There's still a lot I don't know about the case. I should ask now while I have a chance. Let's see. What else do I need to know more about? Uh, okay, the motive was stealing, the crime scene was the temple. I don't know anything about the weapon. Mr. Payne, what was the murder weapon? The murder weapon was the treasure box itself. The empty treasure box left of the scene had a large blood stain on it. How utterly, re oh, how utterly reprehensible using the sacred treasure box for murder. The accused came to the treasure room with the express per nah, express purpose of stealing the treasure. My goodness. He climbed the altar stairs, snatched the box, ready to abscond with the treasure. But he was discovered by Mr. Roll, who had come to the room to in the course of his rounds. And didn't pull his gun? After walloping Mr. Roll on the head with the treasure box, the accused forced the bloodied housing open and made off with the treasure inside. But the defendant is just a little boy. I hardly think he would be able to hit the victim a grown man on the head. Ah, very good point, Mr. Wright. But I'm afraid that won't help you. At the time of the crime, the accused was on the stairs leading up to the altar. 
BQ's elevated position would more than make up for the difference in stature. It's a fair point. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. <laughs> Mr. Bane, your reasoning is flawless. What an elegant argument. Hats off to you, Chief Prosecutor. Your title is obviously well earned. Well, the accused's guilt is certainly conclusive. Unless there is anything else, I am ready to announce my verdict. Very well. In that case, I find the accused. To just one moment, your majesty. Don't... don't you think you're rushing the verdict just a little bit? I told you. I have plans to attend to, and... Ah! I'm late! It's already started! How did the time fly by so fast? He's still stuck on that. We haven't even heard the defendant's side of the story yet. Your Majesty, the defense asserts its rights to cross-examine the defendant. Huh? Did I say something funny? Cross-examine the... What do you mean by that? What? What do you mean, what do I mean? Ah, yes, the tutorial in which you have to t teach the entire court how to do a court thing. I seem to have some dim recollection of the process, but I can't quite recall. And little wonder, the so-called defendant hasn't been questioned in over 20 years. A so-called defendant, sorry. Should I even be surprised anymore? Anyway, I demand to let the defendant, or the accused, tell the side of his side of the story. Is that really necessary? Of course it's necessary, your majesty. <laughs> what harm could it do? I say we allow the boy to speak, your majesty. Though I doubt he'll have anything of relevance to say. <laughs> oh, how kind of you, your royal painness. Hmm. Very well, as long as it's okay with you, Mr. Payne. I'm already hopelessly waylaid for my class, anyway. In that case, the prosecution calls the accused back to the witness stand. Oh, but before we do, I'd better call my wife and apologize for missing that class. Any objections? Go for it, your majesty. Accused, state your name and occupation again, if you would. I'll be your guide. I'm in training to be a monk. And I'm a tour guide, too. <sighs> Why me? Now, where were we? Cross-examining the defendant, your majesty? Right, right. Let's do that, then. At the defense attorney's insistence, I might add. <sighs> he, sounds a he sounds a little dispirited. His wife must have given him a piece of her mind. Well, the defense had better get to it. And make it quick, if you please. The defense? Mr. Wright, I didn't know you were a lawyer. Well, I am, and I'm here to defend you, Albie. Don't worry. All you have to do is tell the truth, and you'll be alright. You... You tricked me! What? If I knew you were a lawyer, I wouldn't have given you that tour. Give me back that Magatamamon I gave you yesterday. Albie, what's going- what's gotten into you? Don't talk to me! You- you disgust me! Not even Albie's against me. But why? <laughs> this must be a new experience for you, Mr. Wright, being loathed by a client. Now then, accused. Please give the court your testimony. The incident occurred around noon, during the break between the morning and afternoon dances of devotion. I want you to tell the court what you were doing around that time. All right. Ooh, it's so fancy. Fancy and foreign. I didn't kill Mr. Roll, and I didn't steal the treasure. I'm not allowed to go anywhere near the treasure room. I've never even seen that treasure box with the green Karainese butterfly on it. When the incident happened, I was in the hallway planning out my tour route. Did, uh, did he just describe the box? Mister, I've never seen it before. Ooh. 
Were you well acquainted with the victim? Yes, he used to chat with me whenever we ran into each other in the temple. Mr. Roll was a monk in training when he was a kid too, you know. I bet Albie looked up to him. But he had to give that up and go to work when his family needed money. That's why he became a guard. But at least that way he could still stay on at the temple. He was so proud when he was put in charge of guarding the treasure box. He even got to carry the box to the palace with the New Year's for the New Year's right. The victim's parents apparently both died relatively young. So Mr. Roll had to support his younger brothers and sisters as well. But even with his job as security guard, I'm sure things couldn't have been easy for him. Sounds like his circumstances in Albies are very similar. Mr. Roll encouraged me to never give up. I'll be you train hard and make sure you become a monk one day. Don't end up like me, he said. He was always cheering me on, in my training or in my tour guide business, too. Why in the world would I kill a nice man like that? Yes, yes, I see. You expressed yourself well. Defense, now that you've heard the accused account, are you finally satisfied? If so, let's draw this to an expeditious conclusion. But your majesty, I haven't even cross-examined the defendant yet. Hmm. That wasn't the end of it. It's been so long I don't rightly recall what this cross-examining thing is all about. I judge she doesn't know what a cross-examination is. What fresh... <laughs> what is this? <laughs> I really do wish I could remember how it works. Don't worry, Judge. This is the tutorial. <laughs> but we're not going to sit through it. No, we'll just teach him as we go. Better save my breath. The Judge doesn't exactly seem like a model student. Also, he's in a rush. He'll just have to watch and see how it's done. This is such a different- like, it just feels different, this game. Oh, and look! We're back to, uh, to little check marks instead of health bar. Objection! Sorry, Albie. Oh, Albie. Why would you lie to me? So you say you've never laid eyes on the treasure box, is that right? That's right. It's forbidden, so I'd never do that. In that case, how did you know there was a green butterfly on it? Huh? B because I saw the picture of it in that newspaper article. Yeah, I was afraid you'd say that. Nope. Take another look. These photos are in black and white. You couldn't possibly tell what color the butterfly is from these pictures. Move. Polkunka! I, I beg your pardon? Polkunka is a word in Kurayinese that people use when they're surprised. You just exposed a lie, so this is the power of cross-examination, is it? I should be the one shocked here by your shocking lack of understanding. But just a moment. If the accused was lying, then that just makes him even more suspicious than ever! This just makes things worse for me than ever. Albie, are you hiding something? Please give only truth statements. I can't help you if you don't tell the truth. Darn. I just can't seem to get him to open up to me. <laughs> so accused, you have seen the treasure box with your own eyes after all, haven't you? Well, maybe I did take a peek one time... A long time ago, when I was cleaning the treasure room. But you weren't in the treasure room at the time of the incident, right? Uh, of course I wasn't. Objection! That is a lie. You were most definitely inside the treasure room on the day of the incident. And I have proof. He does? This was found on the floor of the treasure room. I was wondering about that. It's a scroll entitled Notice and contains a list of temple monk duties. These instructions pertain to the day of the incident. And what exactly is that supposed to prove? The accused fingerprints were found on the scroll. What? Oh no! 
Where is it? It's not here. I must have dropped it somewhere. <laughs> Indeed, you must have dropped it when you were busy murdering the victim. No, 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 no. And that means Albie was there on the day of the incident. Due to the growing numbers of thefts around the temple, we've been tightening security throughout. Therefore, all the hallway shutters will remain shut for today's dance of devotion. Okay. <laughs> so this is the power of cross-examination! The more the accused dogs, the guiltier who pains himself! Yes, it would seem so, Your Majesty. <laughs> ah, you predicted my argument and had evidence ready to refute it. How is any of that supposed to help the accused? See, I told you you can't trust lawyers and their lies. Her benevolence has already said the kid's guilty. Just declare him guilty and get it over with. Mm. No, everything's going all wrong. Shadow, what do I do? As I suspected, this cross-examination session has served no purpose whatsoever. No, you're wrong. But armed as we were, armed as we are with her benevolence is insight, there's no reason to doubt his guilt. I guess I'll just have to poke holes in this insight of hers. By the way, this didn't prove to be very interesting at all, Mr. Bain. Nevertheless, I will now finally announce my verdict. Wait just one moment, Your Majesty. I haven't seen this divination seance for myself yet. As the defense, I have the right to check it. Hmm. Is that really necessary? I have to get home and apologize to my wife. I guess she really did give him the business. Your Majesty, I enthusiastically support having Mr. Wright see the seance. You do? And why is that, Mr. Payne? Don't you want to see it? See the lawyer being utterly crushed by the power of the seance? And then watch him tearfully beg for mercy? Oh, well, no. <laughs> That's his motive. I'm sure it'll make up for not getting to go to that class with your wife. It certainly does sound with we'll C. And it'd be give me a juicy tidbit to tell Mrs. Ha ha ha. I've been reduced to a juicy tidbit. Well, for an interloper, I imagine you do have to see it for yourself to be convinced. It's certainly unprecedented. Pre bleh, unprecedented. But let's have the divination seance performed again. But then, right after the tearful bagging, I really do have to be going. The only tearful begging is going to come from the prosecution when we're through. Heh heh heh. Half the defense looks still scrambling desperately for a foothold. Blissfully unaware that defeat and despair are all that await him. Ready to see the gimmick of this game? Here she is, her benevolence. Your benevolence, Rafe Uphead McCurray. Thank you for coming all this way once again. Your gratitude is unnecessary. This is simply my duty. Barb-headed attorney. Y yes I am told you question the veraci veracity of the sacred divination seance. It would seem the depths of your irreverence and blasphemy are lost on you. I'm just a foreigner, ignorant of the, your ways and customs of this country. I apologize in advance for anything rude I might say or do, your benevolence. All I want is a fair trial for Albie. You would imply that the trials of this country are unfair. Do you explain, outsider? Her verdicts founded on truths imparted by the very souls of the dead lack impartiality. What's fair about trials with no defense and no chance for the accused to tell their story? How oh, dare you speak to her benevolence in that manner? Did you hear that? Did you hear how he talked to her benevolence? What does he know about anything? Ignorant outsider? We won't stand for it. It must be punished. He must be punished. Thanks. Looks like I really stuck my foot in my mouth this time. Punish him! Punish him! Punish him! Punish him! Silence, one and all. 
is she standing up for me? Be not disquieted, my people. He merely expresses his opinion. Well, well. Looks like her benevolence is going to be more... going to be more reasonable than I thought. Attorneys are ghastly creatures with souls stained black by the brazen untruths. The words of a lowly worm such as that are not worth troubling yourselves over. Alright, I take that back. None of his prattling can sway the truth of my insights. Rest assured, he will soon see the error of his foolish ways. Now then, your bene benevolence, the divination sails if you would. Certainly. Nana, my robe. Just slid in and out. Oh, Holy Mother, we hold this divination seance in your name. Let the eyes of everyone here be clear and our ears be unstopped. Oh, dance of devotion, guide the victim's soul to me so that we may receive their final memories in the pool of souls. What just happened? An image appeared in the pool. A final message from the victim's soul. The last communication of his Mitama. Mitama. I don't know how to pronounce that word. The divination seance has revealed this to us. Her benevolence can use her power of spirit communication. Or sorry, communion. To project the victim's memories of the last few moments before their demise. So what we saw in the polls was what Mr. Roll actually experienced? In the victim's memories, we see the accused raising a weapon high over his head. This is consistent with the findings of the police investigation. We didn't actually see what he was holding, though. There has to be some kind of mistake. I didn't do it. This looks bad for Albie. Really, really bad. <laughs> now do you see why I'm the incredible pain? Oh, you're in incredible pain, all right. <laughs> More than I can express. <laughs> but even if those really are the victim's last memories, what can I do with them? <laughs> there it is. There's the face of a man being utterly crushed. 
Oh, how long I've waited to see it. Isn't it wonderfully gratifying, your majesty? Oh, yes, very satisfying indeed. Now are you finally convinced of The accused is most assuredly guilty. Am I really the only unbiased one here? I don't really know whether you're unbiased, though, Phoenix, because you were convinced that Albi is innocent. <clears throat> now then, I think we've been amused enough. If you give up now, I won't even invoke the Defense Culpability Act against you. Ah, there it is. I was wondering when it was going to come up. You'd be free to slink back to your own country with your tail between your legs. The Defense Culpability Act? What's that? What? You mean you honestly don't know? I, uh, no. What's with all the hubbub? Well, well. Not only is he a lying, black-hearted lawyer, he's also an imbecile. Your Majesty, I think you'd better explain the Defense Culpability Act to him. Yes, I think I'd better. The Defense Culpability Act, or DC Act for short, is as follows. In the name of her eminence, those who would support criminals will be deemed just as guilty. In other words, if you help the accused by defending him and he is found guilty, you will receive the same sentence as he. What? What kind of insane law is that? Under the DC Act, many an attorney has been convicted and met with a great Looks like they're smiling. I guess they're more sneering, like growling, kind of. Some went to prison, others received the death penalty. Ooh. That's why there are so few in our country today who admit to being an attorney. That explains a lot. Hmm. <laughs> That's as it should be. The history of our courts proves that attorneys are black souled creatures who will tell any lie to save the accused. Thus, attorneys deserve to be exterminated. Eesh, harsh. I've never felt so much hostility coming at me from so many sides. What have happened to make everyone feel this way? <laughs> yeah, you're a monster. <laughs> he wanted he wanted Phoenix to deal with uh, whatever sentence Albi was gonna get. He's like, oh yeah. You fell right into my trap, Phoenix Wright. Your win streak against me and my brother ends today. With the seance and the DC act on my side, I'd finally get my revenge. So that's why he was so eager to have me defend Albie. Chased out and humiliated back home, fate brought me to the fo foothills of Kurain. I thank my lucky stars that I am chief prosecutor here now. In defense, know that if I rule the accused as guilty, you will go to prison too. That explains Albi's reaction earlier. <laughs> Your Majesty, isn't a prison sentence a bit lenient? After all, we're talking about treason. When should pay for such a crime with one's life? Dude, chill! <laughs> yes, I believe the death penalty might be appropriate under these circumstances. The death penalty? No way. You're kidding, right, Your Majesty? Ha 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 ha. Do I look like I'm kidding? I'll have you put your life and your dark tainted soul on the line here. Death? This can't be happening. The courts of res resignation. Our courts are well known as thus. In this land where my seances provide the truth and no attorneys can intervene. Criminals know that all they can do is resign themselves to their fate. Oh, foreign lawyer, I ask you once more. Are you sure you still want to defend the accused? There's Maya to think of in all this, too. I can't just lay down my life. What in the world should I do? He's innocent. You're fine. Isn't this why I became a lawyer in the first place? Ah, good old flashbacks. To help those with no one on their side. I can't just abandon.
stand in everything I believe in. All I can do now is stand firm and fight. Well, don't hold your tears back on my account, Phoenix Wright. Admit your defeat and grovel back and grow, grovel before me, the chief prosecutor, for your life. Objection! Even if it means being subject to the Defense Culpability Act, I will defend Albi. What? But Mr. Wright! The defendant insists he's innocent. Not even a divination seance should be accepted without examination. Polkonka? Polkonka? But if I'm found guilty, you'll get the death penalty too. Even knowing that, you still wouldn't defend me? I don't know what happened in the past. But it looks like everyone in this country considers lawyers to be liars. So I can understand if you don't believe me. But I still believe in you and your innocence. So all I have to do is keep believing and find the truth. That's all there is to it. <laughs> Bob-headed attorney, you continue to amuse me. Though your barbed jabs are proving to be more than mere jokes. Your benevolence. Believe me when I say that this attorney will knock your insights out. That's Insolent, disrespectful attorney. You'll have plenty of time to regret your folly in the Twilight Realm. wise move, Traveler. Not wise at all. You should have taken the chance I offered to save your life. But you have made your choice. The Defense Culpability Act will be applied in this case. And with this verdict, you'll both soon be parting with your heads. Wow. It's intense, guys. <laughs> This game is really different. <laughs> the souls of the departed speak only the truth, and I but give their messages a voice. If you think my insights contain falsehood, I challenge you to prove it. Time to cross-examine a vision. The accused swung whatever he was holding down on the victim's head. With the pain, the victim's vision went dark. This is when he lost his life. Still, I can't believe it. A murder after the morning dance of devotion. These are the victim's experiences just before his death. As the victim's final memories, we can assume they aren't lies. So how do I break this down? Allow me to relieve you of your ignorance defense. Did you notice the words that appeared in the seance vision? Come to think of it, I did see words like song of ceremony and incense. The victim's final memories are not limited to sight alone. Sight, smell, taste, sound, touch, all is laid bare in a pool of souls. So what Mr. Rawl experienced with his five senses appears in the vision as words, right? Precisely. And by examining these sensations, we can perceive the victim's final moments with unparalleled clarity. Works for me. I can use all the extra information I can get. Now, to find a contradiction between her insights and the seance vision... Your benevolence, I ask that you please show me the seance vision again. Very well. Okay, so... The Song of Ceremony is the Dance of Devotion, right? So... 
So would it have happened... It didn't happen after it. It happened during it. Wait a minute. Her benevolence said after the morning dance of devotion earlier, didn't she? Okay. Cool. I'm on the right track. Isn't there something off about that? Yes, there is. Okay, so... I'll use these arrows to select insight, I think, is off. Okay. Alright, it's teaching me. This is the insight that sounded funny. Now I'll just carefully compare this insight with the seance vision. If I notice a sensation that seems contradictory, I'll, s I'll tap select. Okay. So, it's going. Incense is the new thing. Song of Ceremony is the problem. This is it. This is the part of the vision that contradicts the insight. Now I just select the sensation I think is inconsistent and then present it. Song of Ceremony. The sound. Sound. Smell. That's cool how it does that. Objection! That's cool. Wait just a moment. Yes. What is it, Bobbed Head? You're saying the incident occurred after the morning dance of devotion, right? That's right. What of it? Then isn't it strange that Mr. Roll could still hear the song of ceremony? Oh, oh my, you're absolutely right! <laughs> Gasp! <laughs> Is that all that troubles you? Huh? What the victim heard was just a practice run of the song of ceremony. Practice run? What are you talking about? Mr. Payne, if you would. Certainly. Allow me to explain. The incident occurred in the interval between the morning and afternoon dances. During that time, the singers were practicing in the performance hall. Precisely. I was there as well, so I can corroborate the statement. I see. So what the victim heard was that practice session. Uh, there goes my contradiction. Okay, so they were practicing in this performance hall. That must be the room where Albie and I saw her benevolence dancing. However, Mr. Payne, I admit one detail troubles me. Ask away, your majesty. It's a big, big temple. The performance hall and the treasure room are quite far from each other. Could the song really be heard all the way in the treasure room? He's right. It's a very big temple. Well, how about it, Mr. Payne? Your Majesty, have you forgotten? There are speakers in every room of the temple temple, including the treasure room. Oh, that's right. Speakers. For what purpose? Are you serious, Mr. Wright? Are there to broadcast sacred music of the performance all throughout the temple? That's why the victim could hear the song of ceremony in the seance vision. It was the practice run going on in the performance hall, heard over the speakers. Why would they broadcast practice over the speakers? Thank you for your explanation, your benevolence. That makes perfect sense, even to a feeble-minded old man like me. Think nothing of it. Now, if you wouldn't mind, could you please alter your insights for us? Very well. Song of ceremony the victim heard was a practice run through the temple speakers. I think I'm getting the hang of this. If I point out an inconsistency, she'll update her insights accordingly. So if I keep pointing things out, maybe I can knock all of her insights out after all. I better find another inconsistency, no matter how small. Hmm. It's a bit hard to focus on the insights with the seance vision going. I'll try using the pause button to temporarily stop the vision. There, I paused the vision. I think I can touch the flashing panels to jump to different parts of the vision. Cool. I'll try moving the Matama mark to the flashing red panel there. Okay, now that I know how to get around in this seance vision, time to find inconsistencies between the insights and the vision. Okay. Alright. We don't know what he was holding.
I have a problem with the fact that his arms aren't moving. Right? Like, he doesn't swing him down. It's black pain. There it is. It's black, and then he screams or something. And then it's pain. Like, cuts out. Going dark without the pain. Is that what it is? I have a feeling this is not gonna be right. Objection! You're saying the victim's field of vision went dark right after he was struck, correct? Of course, as anyone with eyes can see. Well, pardon me, but I must disagree. What? Your benevolence, please take another look at the exact moment the victim felt pain. Hmm. Oh. Everything goes black, and then only after that the victim feels pain. Inconceivable. This place is the order of events at odds with what you say happened. My word! She's not happy. Polkunka, your benevolence, what is the meaning of this? I c cannot be wrong. My insights are beyond fallacy. If what the defense says is true, this is a very grave matter indeed. Uh, please forgive me, your benevolence, but I'm afraid this contradiction is something we simply can't ignore. Yes, the judge is on my side. <laughs> now, now, let's not be too hasty, your majesty. I think I can clear this up. You have something to add, Mr. Payne? A thousand apologies. It seems the prosecution has failed to make one tiny thing clear. And that would be... On the day of the incident, there was a power outage, a blackout, in one part of the temple. And as I recall, the crime scene was in that sector. The power outage must be why the victim's field of vision went dark. I apologize for neglecting to tell the court this tale. I'm afraid it slipped my mind. Or rather, you knew all along and are only letting it slip now that's convenient, Payne. I don't know, didn't he still hear the song, though? The power outage knocked off both the lights and the speakers. Oh, there was a blackout there, was there? Well, now. That explains everything, does it not? What do you mean, your benevolence? Please share your thoughts with us, if you would. The blackout occurred when the accused and the victim were faced with one another. Fearing the victim would flee under the cover of darkness. <laughs> The accused swiftly brought his weapon down on the victim's head. I see. That makes perfect sense, your benevolence. So the victim was struck after the lights went out. The depth of your insight is all inspiring your benevolence. Give her a hand, everyone. Well done! Long may you live and prosper! Hey, I want to live long and prosper, too. Enough of plots. You flatter me. And now your benevolence in light of the new information. Yes, of course. I will alter my insight. Alright. So much for my inconsistency. At least I was able to draw out some new info. And with new info comes a chance to find new inconsistencies. Come right into the sides of the vision again, and we'll see what else we can dig up. A long and arduous process, this is. Yeah, we have problems still. Yes, I finally found it. This is the gaping hole I've been looking for. Your benevolence, as impressive as your spirit communion power is, it's not infallible. You never know when to stop talking, do you? I hope you realize your words are an insult to all adherents of Kyrianism. Defense, watch what you say! 
If you don't mind that tongue of yours, you won't have one left to mind. It's certainly not my intention to insult spirit mediums, but maybe I'm not the one who needs to learn when to stop talking. What's malarkey? I believe you said a few moments ago that the victim could hear the song of ceremony thanks to the temple's speakers. But then how do you explain how the victim could still hear the song of ceremony even after the power went out? Oh. This contradiction of facts can only mean that the song of ceremony Mr. Roll heard was not coming from the speakers. What? Impossible! What are you saying? That the song he heard was coming directly from the performance hall? That's exactly what I'm saying. It's the only possible explanation. But the scene of the crime is nowhere near the performance hall. Right. The song couldn't make it all the way to the treasure room. Not unless... Y you mean to say... Yes. The treasure room was not the actual scene of the crime. It must have been somewhere else, somewhere closer to the performance hall. What? You can't be serious. There is a glaring contradiction in the claims of her benevolence and the prosecution. Therefore, the defense insists that this case be thoroughly re-examined. What? N no This is completely unprecedented. Uh, an inconsistency in her benevolence's insights. Unbelievable. Heed not his forked tongue, your majesty. These are but the claims of a corrupt lawyer. A feeble ruse from the feeble mind. But the contradiction revealed by the defense is undeniable. I, we can't. We can't just turn a blind eye to it. But the defense's assertion is in the end meaningless, even if the location of the murder turned out to be different. It doesn't change what we've seen of the moment of the murder. Uh, indeed, the accused is standing right there in front of the victim. Furthermore, the murder weapon remains raised above his head. My insights still stand. I hate to admit it, but she's right. The seance vision still makes the situation really grim for Alva. <laughs> I doubt even the defense can dream up an explanation as to why the accused had his hands up over his head. Well, this defense dares to dream of making it out of this nightmare alive. You what? You still insist on trying to tear down my insights. Do you? You better be prepared to back up your claim. Remember what will happen to that tongue of yours if we find you are just wagging it. Of course, I can back up my claim. Just as soon as I think of something... You appear to be fully prepared to fence. In the, as the embodiment of this court, I give you permission to try and prove it. As long as you are willing to stake your life on it. Ah, bluffing seems so dangerous now! I can carry your majesty. Prepare the tongue shears. Chop chop! Chop chop! Yes, let's have the pay the fetch. I think I saw a suitable pair in the basement. Chop chop. Stop, stop! <laughs> I hear that lying lawyers have several tongues to spare. I am sure he won't miss one. Yikes, these people are actually serious. I'm rather attached to my tongue. Think, Phoenix, think! Other than to raise a weapon, why would Albie have held his hands up like that? Well, he's... Oh. Aha, so that's why. Yeah, he's... Uh, because he was, uh... Because it was a sol he was a He was a soldier. Or a guard, or whatever. I forgot that it had shown it er earlier. But yeah, no, I was thinking he would hold his hands up like... Hands up where I can see them. That kind of thing. The reason the defendant had his hands up over his head can be explained by something in the crime photo. As in the seance vision, I witnessed the defendant raise both of his hands over his head yesterday. You did? Where did you see such a thing? And the police had their guns trained on him as they made their arrest. Oh, what are you saying? The victim was a security guard, and an armed one at that. The defense proposes that the victim had pointed his firearm at Alvi. Why? And that's why the defendant's hands were raised in the air. 
Uncle Kunka. Oh, she's fainting now. Ooh. Oh, she's on the floor. Oh, somebody get her. You would have thought the seance vision could be interpreted that way. Th this is not possible. It, it can't be. Not bad for a total knockout. How dare that lawyer devil go against her benevolence? He's no better than the traitorous snake Dirk. Traitorous snake Dirk? Who's that? No, I can't believe it. I think we got some backstory there. Contradiction in one of my insights. There has to be some kind of mistake. I... I won't accept it. Uh, that's right, your benevolence, and I won't accept it either. It goes against all we hold sacred. Throw him in jail immediately for his least majesty. For least... For least majesty? What? Yeah! You said it! Throw him in jail! Yes, make him pay for the way he disrespects her benevolence. Ugh, these people are definitely not my fans right now. That's right, exterminate him! Peace, give me peace. I said peace! Now, everyone, please calm down. Hmm? Is he. Your Majesty, please assign this black hearted attorney a suitable punishment. No, I can't charge him with the least majesty. What? What? But why not, Your Majesty? He was simply following the proper procedure for defending the accused. There's nothing unlawful about that. But your majesty, don't you want to wrap up this trial quickly? Why not just give the verdict? Then you could go home and make it up to your wife. We can't end the trial now, not when we just learned new information about the case. What? Your majesty, not you too. You would honestly entertain the idea that my insight contains a contradiction. But truly, it is shocking. In the 20 plus years since the DC Act went into effect, such a thing has never occurred. To be honest, I didn't want to believe it either. But with his life on the line, the defense pointed out an inconsistency. And it is our duty to scrutinize it to the satisfaction of the law. You dare go against the royal priestess, you non believer! Uh, no, my faith is as strong as ever. But I have a duty to make a fair ruling in this trial. If you insist on interfering with that process, your benevolence, I'm afraid I must request your removal from this courtroom, royal priestess or not. What? I'll have you know. Your benevolence. Please acquiesce in this, your benevolence. <laughs> if looks could kill. I won't forget this offense, barbed head. I do not admit defeat. I won't. Really, do you see your benevolence out? Your Matama will force, face due retribution in the Twilight Realm. The demons there will they'll pluck the barbs right off your stupid head. <laughs> I hope your severing will be super duper painful. And and I hope they throw you into a lake of burning fire. And, and then and then. Well then. She's still just a teenager after all. <laughs> yeah, she is. I think she's 16. I can look at the profiles now. Albie is nine? My gosh, this poor kid. Oh, she's 14. Yeah. Now, defense, Mr. Light, was it? That's right, Your Majesty. Uh, Phoenix Wright. Of course, Mr. Wright. My apologies. Well, now that we have this newly uncovered fact, I suggest we proceed with arguments. Thank you, Your Majesty. Yes, yes, but do not misunderstand me. This doesn't mean I trust you completely. I'll be keeping a close eye on you, so don't even think about lying to this court. I understand, Your Majesty. Phew, maybe now we can finally run a real trial. Perhaps. <laughs> Arguments, your majesty. Well, I accept your challenge. Huh? What's with him? 
<laughs> oh, the look on your face, Mr. Wright. It's just... <laughs> it's just too hilarious. What's so funny, Mr. Payne? The defense still doesn't get it. The truth he unearthed is going to bury him in his case instead. What do you mean by that, prosecutor? I told you, it's chief prosecutor. Yes, because that's the point to focus on right now. The defense is digging its own grave. Consider this, your majesty. Why would the victim, a security guard, point a gun at the accused? Oh, that's what I was wondering. Oh, indeed, because the accused was about to commit a theft. It's the only logical explanation. What? That does sound pretty logical, actually. It doesn't help the accused situation at all. If anything, it makes him look even more guilty. Yes, I have to agree. Allow me to spell out this truth the defense didn't bother to think through. Mr. Roll came across the accused just as he was trying to steal the treasure. The guard pointed his gun at the accused, and just when the power went out, the accused murdered the victim and hid his body in the treasure room. <laughs> a hand truck for moving heavy treasure around a store in the treasure room. The accused could have easily moved the body with that. And after all that hard work to knock down those insides. <sighs> Back into the old familiar corner once again. Mr. White, do you have a rebuttal? Drawing a total blank here. <laughs> I hope you're ready to climb that scaffold. Hey. I, uh... Asked you a question, Defense. I've got nothing. I can't think of any grounds for an, obje an objection. The only thing to do at this point is ask the defendant himself what happened. Yes! <laughs> yes, please! But I don't know if Albie will cooperate with me or not. Albie? Will you tell us what really happened? You don't have to say anything accused. Fall for his evil trap and you only dirty your own soul. Albie, you have to tell me the truth. I can't help you unless you do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mr. Wright, I'm sorry. Why? Why won't he trust me? Is this it? Is this the end for both of us? Maya, I'm sorry. I never met a real... I never met a real lawyer before. Everybody always told me they're bad, bad people who help dirty criminals go free. I never thought a lawyer would actually try to help me. Actually believe in me. Would risk his own life for me. I never would have even imagined it. Albie! So, that's why I lied. To try and save myself. But I'm not going to lie anymore. If you believe in me enough to put your life on the line... Then I'm going to believe in you, too! Wh what?! Allow me... Allow me to explain! Now we're talking. Time to finally get to the bottom of things. To be honest, I went into the treasure room lots of times to look, for the tre look at the treasure box. Even though the temple told you you weren't allowed to go anywhere near it? Yes, I'm sorry. Mr. Roll even saw me once and scolded me. But that box is so beautiful, with the way it glows in the dark. I couldn't help myself. Wait, it glows in the dark? That's right, it's covered in a special mineral called fluorine fluorinite that makes it glow. It's absolutely breathtaking. It's really a shame they don't put it on display for the public. Can you imagine how many people would go on night tours at the temple if they did? If only he applied such passion to telling me the truth earlier. It glows in the dark! The seance did not have light coming down from it. On the day of the incident, I was on my way to the treasure room again. 
when I ran into Mr. Roll on the Great Steel Stairs. So, those are not the treasure room stairs in the seance vision. No, they were the great stairs that connect the hallway. Connect to the hallway. Makes sense. The vision wasn't clear enough to show us what was at the top of the stairs. Oh, finally, I get that diagram. I was wondering if I would. All of a sudden, Mr. Roll drew his gun and threatened me with it. I quickly put my hands up. Mr. Roll, he acted so scary. For some reason, he had his scarf over his mouth. I couldn't read his expression at all. Just then, the power went out. So I took it a chance to hightail it out of there. I ran for my life, even now when I try to think back on it. All I can remember are the gun and the piercing look in Mr. Roll's eyes. That must have been when I dropped the notice scroll. Which means someone else brought it to the treasure room along with Mr. Roll's body. Did Mr. Roll say anything to you when you ran into him on the stairs? <clears throat> what is it, Albie? I have no idea why, but he asked me a strange question. Did you steal it? He said. What? I'm sorry. I'm sorry I didn't say all this before. I didn't think anybody would believe me. <laughs> a grand speech. One that confirmed my suspicions that you were the thief. Mm. Objection! But that might have just been the victim's misunderstanding. Objection! This sounds like a different voice. Where there's smoke, there's fire, as they say. The victim must have had good reason to be suspicious of the accused. Why does every new piece of information have seemed so incriminating? Shadow, what do I do, Shadow? Shadow a person or an expression? I don't understand. And what better reason to suspect the boy than seeing the treasure box in his hands? In the course of his rounds, the victim must have noticed the treasure had been stolen. And then just after that, He ran into the accused. I'll be your guide. No, th that's not what happened. Therefore, the one who stole the treasure and killed the victim it can be none other than the accused. Mm -hmm. What just... What just came out of there? <gasps> Aw! Is that a puppy? <laughs> what now? Aww. He's so cute. Hey, Shadow Downboy. Oh, <laughs> that's who he was talking to the whole time. Downboy? Well, what do we have here? I'm sorry about this. This is my dog, Shadow. You nearly gave me a heart attack. So that's what was making his bag move. Can't you quiet that yappy butt down? Shadow says that Mr. Roll made a mistake. You can understand him? <laughs> Don't tell me this is a surprise witness for the defense. I beg your pardon. You're not thinking of cross-examining an animal, are you? Well, we've done it before. <laughs> of course not, your majesty. Not this time, anyway. True. Well, I'm glad to hear that. I thought I'd have to reassess my assessment of your sanity for a second there. I think I'd better reassess my strategy. And fast. I have to somehow show that somebody else could have struck the victim or were sunk. While it's true that the defendant was standing in front of the victim when he died, it doesn't mean somebody else couldn't have struck the victim at that time. If you're going to go that far, then I hope this means you have another angle of approach ready. Yeah, quite literally, actually. Exactly! I mean, who but the accused, standing in front and center, could have done it? Unless you can back up your claim. It's nothing more than conjecture. Again, very good, uh, very solid on the hinting at things. Back? Yeah? Mm hmm Yeah, I can back up my claim. Okay, come on, Phoenix. I know I can think of something convincing. Where else could the victim have been stuck, struck from? The back. Behind him. Take that! 
With the defendant standing in front of the victim, isn't it possible that the victim could have been struck from behind? From behind, you say? <laughs> I see. Yes, I suppose it's not outside the realm of possibility. Good. Now at least I have some breathing room. But, uh, who do you suppose it could have been? Oh, uh, the true culprit, naturally. The one who actually committed the theft and the murder. The true culprit. And I suppose you have a true timeline of events to go along with that? I should have known I'd have to explain everything. Alright, if we assume the true culprit struck the victim from behind, then that means... After going to the treasure room and stealing the treasure, the two cu true culprit tried to escape. But then Mr. Roll appeared, making his rounds. I imagine the culprit then quickly hid in the storeroom at the other end of the hallway. <laughs> You're grasping at straws, Mr. Wright. Admit it! You have nothing but baseless conjecture! I I'm going to look for something to base it on right now. Albie? When you ran into Mr. Roll in the hallway, was there anyone around the storeroom area? I don't know. There might have been somebody there, but I couldn't see. I was only halfway down the stairs, so I couldn't see the ends of the hallway. See. Swing and miss. Oh, Shadow says that someone was there. I see. Thank you for that. Too bad his testimony is inadmissible. <laughs> you think this is a joke? Maybe the defendant didn't happen to see this other person. But that doesn't mean the true culprit couldn't have been there in the hall. You're desperate. You're desperate floundering. It's getting hard to watch. But I will enjoy watching you sink. What are you talking about? Unfortunately for you, only the accused and the victim were there in that hallway at the time of the incident. How could you continue to make that assertion? Because there was a witness. A very reliable eyewitness. There was a third person that saw the only two people in the place? Mm. What? Your Majesty, the prosecution would like to call its witness to the stand. Oh boy, here we go. It's going to be a long one, because I believe that this is only one part uh, for this particular case. I think it's just all here and now. So, uh, strap in, guys. Calling an eyewitness to the stand, hmm? It's been decades since that's happened. And unlike the defense's witness, you can rest assured that there are no pets involved. That was a low blow. <laughs> Shadow agrees. Very well, I'll allow it. And now for something we've not heard in quite some time. Uh, bring the witness to the stand. Hello, bad guy. Witness, please state your name and occupation. I beg your pardon? Peace, love, and... Oh, peace, love, and understanding. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> this case <laughs> has the weirdest names <laughs> of the entire game series. Ahem. <clears throat> I don't even remember what I did for its voice anymore. Peace, love, and understanding's the name. I'm like Temple Temple's head muck. Can you dig? Sure, buddy. <laughs> Whatever you say. Uh, oh, if it is an instructor and and a standin. <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> You're the eyewitness? Instructor? Not only is Mr. Understandin's Temple Temple's head monk, but he's also a renowned Dalman, Damalan expert. Oh, this is uh, this is a struggle, guys. I'm so sorry. Sorry, I have to ask. But what's Damal Damalan? Is it the guitar thing? Is it the, li the lyre? The lute? 
Lyra's a Lyra's a harp. Loot. Check it. Here she is, my sweet serenader, my one and only. Groovy, right? Oh my gosh, this guy. But you heard our sultry sounds once before, brother. I was. He the one. Okay. Yeah. Mm hmm. That's the song from the Dance of Devotion. Right on, brother. The Song of Ceremony. Playing this tune together is a precious gig for me and my girl here, you dig? The Song of Ceremony. The song that was playing at the time of the murder. Oh, Holy Mother. May the righteous sounds of my doubt... Damalon serve as my offering to you. <laughs> oh boy. Wonderful. A great performance, as always. This is my thing, you know. My bag. I make instruments speak, baby. You also kill people, apparently. By the by, Magistry Pops. No da Damalon class today? No, I'm afraid this trial has gone into overtime. Thanks to the lawyer of that. The class the judge wanted to attend was a Damalon lesson? Well, you know what they say, baby. Never trust the lawyer, man. The transgressors against the Holy Mother have been brought to have to be brought to justice. Thank you for your cooperation, Mr. Andestanden. <laughs> As the treasure's keeper, you must have been shocked to learn that it had been stolen. He's a treasure keeper? What does that even mean? Why would he steal his own treasure? That makes no sense. Yeah, man, that was not cool. Keeping the treasure safe is one of your duties, Mr. Andesandon? That's right, brother. This here's the one and only treasure box key. And I keep it on me at all times, kinda dig. But the sneaky thief went and cracked open that sucker anyway. Total bummer, man. So that's the key to the treasure box, is it? You know it, baby. It's called the Magatama Key. It's a historical artifact to boot. It's been passed down from head monk to head monk at Temple Temple. What's the head monk? The Magatama Key, huh? And now someone's jacked the treasure on my watch. It's a real buzzkill, man. How am I ever going to face Her Holiness again? Oh, Holy Mother, please find it in your infinite mercy to forgive me. Please guide this lost and humble end. Why do I always get the far out ones? Mr. Understandin. Underst- and, Sorry, excuse me. Understandin. <laughs> you witness the accused and the victim heading into the treasure room. You know it, baby. Best believe I scooped that tiny transgressor. Would you please give the court your testimony regarding what you saw? To bring justice against the transgressor, man. Yes, of course, I'll do all I can. In the name of Her Holiness, I vow to say not but the truth I swear to bring. Hit me! What I saw, baby. After the morning dance of devotion. I go back to my chamber. I got the notion. Oh my gosh, he's gonna rhyme every single line of his testimony. Don't you know my chamber's on the way? Treasure room. Hey, hey. Any small footsteps I can quite clearly hear. Anyone to the treasure room goes near. Abby was the only one. Abby was the only one. Before the blackout, one other than Rawl. Only Abby to the treasure room did stroll. Oh 
Oh boy. Tell me I was hallucinating just now. Why, can you believe Mr. Roll bit the big one after that? Harsh, man. I share your sentiments. You were the one who discovered the victim's body, weren't you, Mr. Andestanen? What? You found the body as well? He really is a key witness, then. Oh, you found the body as well? That's right, brother. After the blackout, I went to reset the breaker and give power back to the people. Circuit box near my chamber, so I'm always the man for the job, you feel me? The breakers are in the first floor hallway in front of the storeroom. On the way, I gotta wear something funky. Blood, man. Really harsh my mellow. I knew something wasn't kosher, so I swung by the treasure room to see what's what. And I was like, whoa, man. There was poor Mr. Roll, dead as a doornail. Okay. In the interval between the end of the Dance of Devotion and the blackout, the only ones who went to the scene of the crime were the victim and the accused. So you see, Mr. Understanding's insaliable account is what led to the accused arrest. Hold it. Isn't it possible that the murder took place before the end of the Dance of Devotion? <laughs> I'm afraid that's not possible. The victim was in the performance hall until the very end of the dance. He was? Would you like some proof? How's this? A photo taken by a tourist of the morning dance of devotion. Oh. My, what graceful dancing. That's a different, uh... What did he call it? Dal Dalmatan? Da Dal... Dalatan? Da I don't know. I can almost hear the sound of Mr. Andestan's, uh, da oh, Damalon now. Haynes are right. There's Mr. Roll on duty. A very clear picture of him, too. <laughs> Never underestimate the incredible pain! Uh, so in addition to Rafa's insights, he had backup evidence lined up, too, huh? That's actually, I mean, kudos to him. You know, all things considered, if he thought that the case was won from the, uh, from the insights, kudos to him to have evidence as well. I'm definitely going to have to use this later. As a head monk, my monks in training are like my own kids, like family, can you dig it? I should have told I'll be better, man. Before Her Holiness, the Holy Mother. Oh, Albi, confess your sins, my young brother. Head monk, understand it. I, I didn't kill Mr. Roll. So I don't have anything to confess to the Holy Mother. What? Bogus little man. Your faith is weak, like a wet paper bag. Are you feeling me? Spare the rod, hey baby. Spare the child, not maybe. Oh, spoil the child, not maybe. This guy is so annoying. <laughs> Her holiness is magnanimous, son. If you confess your guilt, she'll forgive you in the Twilight Realm. I don't suppose she could forgive him in this realm first. Defense, please begin your cross-examination. Oh my gosh, this guy. All right. <clears throat> Here we go. What I saw, baby. Okay, got the notion to go back to the chamber. And then... I don't even- I don't even know this guy. Alright, I'm just gonna press everything. 
I have a question. Lay it on me, man. How dare you interrupt our performance of the great peace, love, and understanding. I was really enjoying that. Sorry. But you know, there's something about that name I can't put my finger on. Oh good, the game's self-aware. What's funny about peace, love, and understanding? You had a question for me, brother. You were playing something during the Dance of Devotion, weren't you? You know it, baby. I was playing my beautiful girl right here, this diamond line. No, you weren't. In offering to her holiness, I played the music and the singer sing the song ceremony. We weren't playing that same Damalon. Mr. Understand is playing as the best of the kingdom. You must please her holiness greatly. Now, could you continue with your testimony, Mr. Understand? This is not the same instrument he was playing. For the holy mother, I keep on trucking. This Damalon sure still needs some plucking. I'm just gonna keep pressing everything until we... I don't know. I'm sure that the guitar is important. I'm just gonna keep calling it a guitar. <laughs> loot. The loot is important. Could you please point out one more time where your chamber is located? Yeah, man, no sweat. Chamber's on the way from the performance hall to the treasure room. Oh, I see. It's up there. Okay. So anyone going to the treasure room would have to pass by Understanding's chamber. Give peace, love, and under- Oh, give peace, love, and a chance. Hold it. Even from inside your chamber, you can still hear what's going on outside. Temple Temple is a groovy old building, built from Mother Nature's finest. You could hear a pin drop through the wooden walls you dig. In an old building like that, I guess the walls must be pretty thin. And that's how Miss Understanding could know the culprit's movement. Movements. It's all thanks to the Holy Mother's divine protection. Right on, my man. I dedicate this testimony to her holiness. How could you tell it was Albie just from the so sound of some footsteps? Albie is practically family, man. The smooth groove of his shoes are easy to pick out. But how do you know he went to the treasure room? Didn't you think it was possible he went to the storeroom at the other end of the hall? No way, man. I saw him with my own two eyes. You saw him? In the treasure room. Yes, you can believe. My peepers peep the sneaky sneak Albie. And tell us where. Where it is you stood. When you saw the accused, if you would. When I heard the footsteps, I looked out the window. From my window, I could see. Window of the first floor hallway. Cross the courtyard, you dig? That's an interesting bit of information. Huh. And through that window, I saw Albie walking into the church room. Can I add the statement to his testimony? Yeah. Could you please add that statement to your testimony, Mr. Understanding? Got it, brother. Through the window I did spy a little Albie with my own eye. Hold it! The window, you say? That's right, brother. There's a courtyard outside the window in my chamber. Right, let me see. I don't know 
know how helpful this is. Across the courtyard, I can see the window of the hallway to the treasure room, man. Judging from the diagram, I guess that's plausible. A view of the courtyard from your chamber. How nice that must be. I bet it's beautiful at this time of year. What with Kirayini's butterflies flitting about. You know, Pops, I often look out into the courtyard while playing my down the line. Da 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 da. Loot. <laughs> and it goes a little something like this. Hold it! How could you tell it was Albie just from the sound of some footsteps? already did this. Why was this afterward? Sorry. I don't know why this was set after. Okay. For the blackout, one other in roll. Only I'll be the tradition we did stroll. Hold it! How can you be sure that nobody else was there? Whoa, man. You lawyers are as uptight as they say. Isn't it possible that someone else could have snuck past? The answer, my friend, is squeaky wooden floorboards, baby. They make such a racket, not even the quietest cat can sneak by me, you dig? Yes, that makes sense. And all of that just now was simply more of an attorney's unfounded suspicions, I see. That's the truth, baby. It's all that I say. The truth is all. It's everything. Words of wisdom. Words of truth. Um, baby tooth forsooth. Phone booth. Much thanks to Mr. Understanding. Let's bring an end to defense grandstanding. You're not stopping me. Until my client goes free. Wait a minute. Why am I singing? <laughs> right on! Even the lawyer's joining in, baby. Everybody's starting to feel the groovy vibe of my far-out rhythm. I refuse to let him run the show. I think I found the flaw I've been looking for. I understand it was in his chamber on the second floor. But there was something that definitely should have been blocking his view. The, the, the door? door? The fact that it's going upstairs? I don't know. Is it the door? Oh my gosh. I forgot. The shutters are closed. Objection! There's something off about that, Mr. Andestanden. My music is off? I'm sorry, you feel that way, man. Maybe this vibe ain't top of the charts where you're at. What's your poison? Orchestra? Jazz soul? Uh, there's nothing wrong with my ears, Witness, but something's not quite right with your eyes. Mr. Andestanden, you've been lying to this court. Now, why would I lie? Truth and truth alone is all I sing. Lying, y'all? Now, lying ain't my thing. I contend otherwise. Do you recognize this object, Mr. Understanding? It's a temple notice, man. What of it? In this notice, the following instruction to the temple monks is written. All of the hallway's shutters will remain shut for today's dance of devotion. What you talking about, Phoenix? I'm talking about the fact that from your chamber, 
You couldn't have seen anyone going into the treasure room through those shutters. God. Looks like you didn't get the memo. No way. I don't believe it, man. If you don't believe it, why don't you read the notice for yourself? Um... Let's see. Something, 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 something. Is that your idea of reading? I'm not so hot at reading Kuranese, man. I usually get one of the other monks to read stuff for me, you know? Doesn't that make your duties as head monk a little difficult? Hey, cut me some slack, man. I only moved to this country six months ago. And you're a head monk? It's quite recent, isn't it? So, how did someone who's only been here six months become a head monk of the temple? How little you understand. Religious faith can be measured in months or years. I've only been adherent of Koreanism for three months myself. The Holy Mother's teaching really spoke to me, prompting me to stay in this country. Or was it the fact that there are no lawyers here that spoke to you? Hmm? Mr. Payne, I know just how you feel, my man. Her Holiness' teaching spoke to me, too. Ladies and gentlemen, I present Brother Dumb and Brother Dumber. Well, I know I pain suddenly became a believer in Koreanism. But could understand and have had an ulterior motive for becoming a believer, too? Mr. Understand, were you really in your chamber, as you claim? Why, hey, be chill, brother. Weren't you instead somewhere else? Objection. Mr. Wright, what kind of nonsense are you spouting now? According to Mr. Andestanen's testimony, he saw Albie with his own eyes. Therefore, is it really nonsense to suggest he could have seen Albie from somewhere else? Well... I do have theory defense. Do you know where Mr. Andestanen was, if not in his chamber? He wasn't in his room. If Albie had gone down the hallway toward the treasure room, there are only a few places you could have seen Albie from. I do have a theory, Your Majesty. Let's say the witness really did see Albie going toward the treasure room. What then? The defense proposes that this is the only place he could have been to see Albie go down that hall. Over here, right? In the hallway. Take that! There? But you just suggested earlier that that's where the true culprit might have been. Exactly. True, but no matter how I look at it, this is the only place I understand it could have been. Mr. Foreign Lawyer, D don't tell me. Are you accusing Mr. Andestanden of being the true culprit in this case? I love how they give me the choice. It's like, we saw him in the opening cutscene. Like, what's the... What are you trying to get at, game? We saw him. Yes, I'm accusing him. I mean, Phoenix doesn't know, but we do. Yes, Your Majesty. I contend there is a strong possibility this witness is the murderer. That's not gonna fly well. That was a while. How dare you be so disrespectful! First you criticize her benevolence's insights, now you accuse the head monk of murder! Objection! This is the only place the witness could have been. If he was here, he could have struck the victim down from behind and moved his body to the treasure room. That's nothing but groundless conjecture! And there's one more thing. Do you remember what was said in the opening argument? the opening argument. During that argument, it was suggested that Albie used his position as monk in training to get his hands on the treasure. That's right, and what of it? Well, why don't we try this twist on for size? The thief used his position as head monk of the temple to get a hold of that treasure. What? What? You joshing me, man. The key to the treasure box has been passed down from head monk to head monk. What better position to be in if you want to steal the treasure? Y y you can't possibly be serious. Does this mean you're claiming that Mr. Understand's oath of faith is nothing but a lie designed to get him close to the treasure? The witness hasn't been truthful in his testimony to this court. So clearly, he isn't above lying. 
Didn't you swear to the Holy Mother that naught but the truth would you bring? In light of that, I don't think it's unfair to call your faith into question. Objection. This is ridiculous. Are there no limits to what this lawyer will say? I mean, lie is such a strong word. Maybe it was just a mistake. Enough with the nervous wreck routine, prosecutor. You're just embarrassing yourself, man. What? What was that, Mr. Understanden? Lawyer man, you really are the lowest of the low. You've gone and said something I can't forgive. You called my belief into question. My faith in the Holy Mother. And nobody, nobody gets away with that. Oh my. It's a little less chill now. What on earth? That music, it's making my ears bleed. Where did those speakers come from? This is the music of my soul! Death to the lawyer! I'm the Twilight Messenger, can't you tell? Gonna take this line, lawyer. Oh gosh. <laughs> Give it a rest, dude. <laughs> Stripping with lies, running with the Philistines. I'm gonna send that lawyer to the guillotines. Guillotines. And now for something completely different. That plinkety plunk music just wouldn't let me express my rage. Your rage, huh? Isn't the real source of your anger having your lie exposed? You just don't get it. If I lied, it's because you drove me to it. Oh my gosh. All sniffing around suspicious and throwing out false accusations. Sorry, but as a lawyer, I'm afraid that's my job. Yeah, well, lawyers are crap. <laughs> Keep making noise and I'll have to use my partner here on you. I'm the one making noise? Hey, so you want to know the truth, huh? Think you can handle the truth, do ya? Fine. Let's see you try. Feel that heat of my brutal death beat. Savage, right? Sweat and bullets, ain't ya? The screams of my soul are gonna make you mosh pit out of this peanut gallery. Oh, they're into it. Did he really just win the court over with that performance? Yo, geezer! I got something to testify. Get ready for the howling of my soul! Call this chart topper Soul Screaming Truth! Priestess's dance had come to an end. To the music storeroom, my way I did went. Death truth is what you dread. Hear me shred. From my spot in front of the storeroom, I saw Albie creep to the treasure room. And trailing from behind, hound on descent, I saw a patrol. After Albie, he went. Me and my girl here innocent and sweet. Back by the storeroom. Can't be beat. Oh, innocent and sweet. Back by the storeroom can't be beat. Then out went the power. Took it to midnight. Blacker than blackest black. Robin all sight. Yeah, baby. Let the soul metal flow. What is that music? I've never heard anything like this. And it's so fast, it's making my head spin. 
This is Damalin Metal! <laughs> sure is. Here you go. Hey, yo, geezer. How are those ears ringing? I don't know much about music. But I've got chills, and they're multiplying. <laughs> you scared, lawyer man? Run away, run away, fast as you can. What a wonderful rhythm. The perfect accompaniment for further deliberations. Now I'm starting to stand and what, what did you do? Wow, what did you go to the music store room for? Hey, I went to put my Damalin away. She's my precious partner. Gotta give her a good rest until playing the, after playing the riot. But then why did you lie before? Because you sent me. <laughs> huh? We all know about lawyers and their lying, loyaling ways. Am I right, people? If I admitted I went to the storeroom, he'd have drummed up a false charge on me. I don't want to get sent. What do you say? Dude, this guy's gotta chill. He's right, that's so what happened! Now I see why the Defense Culpability Act was passed. You feel me, Karain? Yeah, you said it! Oh my goodness! It's too much to ask for a low-key trial. Now, you punks ready to rock or what? I can't hear you! I said you're ready to teach this lying lawyer how we do things around here. <laughs> he joined in. Alright, then I'm gonna lay it on you one more time. Screaming truth of my soul! Okay, if I can get past the shenanigans. Hold it! Okay. You say you went to the music storeroom. But how do we know you didn't go to the treasure room to steal the treasure instead? And on what grounds would you base that accusation? Got anything to show for? He's right, I don't really have any proof. And yet... Well, you can't prove that you didn't go to the treasure room either. You stole the treasure and were ready to make your getaway when you saw Mr. Roll. So you panicked and ran into the music storeroom, isn't that right? Why do I feel like I'm being stabbed by icy stares from every direction? Silence is your answer, lawyer man. This audience knows the score. Just what we needed, a moment of silence to bid this lawyer's baseless claim goodbye. Why do they have to hate lawyers so much in this country? I said it before, and I'll say it again, lawyer man. Priestess's dance, I went to the music storeroom. Sure you did, buddy. Yeah, I don't I don't care. Hold it. How did Albie appear at the time? I can't think of it, he was glancing around all shifty like. You could tell he was up to no good. Shady, I tell ya. What's that saying about people who live in glass houses? Well, he was about to steal the treasure, so it only stands to reason he'd look for it. Objection! The defendant admitted he was sneaking in to see the treasure box. Wouldn't that be why he was looking around? What's that, people? Only the Holy Mother knows the truth, you say? Psst, this is wrong. He's loving knows the score, baby. From my lips to our Holy Mother's ear, an artist only sings what he saw there. In other words, my reasoning is good enough for God Boy here. And what did you see next, Mr. Adam Stannon? Hold it! Something tells me this is going to be a spectacular waste of time, but. What do you mean by hound on the scent? What? You don't get it? It's always the same, y'all. Lyrics questioned without mercy. 
The more famous the song, the greater the controversy. It wasn't your lyrical sense I was questioning. I say hound on the scent like a hunting dog, cause you know Rawl was a guard and... Uh oh, here we go. The inspiration came to me suddenly, like a flash. Um, that's okay, you don't have to explain your lyrics anymore. Hey, you're the one who asked. I knew I shouldn't have asked. Mr. Stanton, you're still on the stand, so please take your testimony. You can explain your lyrics to me later. Damn well, class. Fine, have it your way, geezer. The show must go on. Slash and thrash. This guy is a giant waste of time. Hold it. Uh, what exactly were you doing in the music storeroom? There, did the picture? Picture? What picture? Mr. Understanding is requesting that you do not ask him the same thing over and over. Hey, geezer! You got him one. Take a bow, baby. How the heck did he understand that? What was I doing in the music store room, you, you ask? I already told you. He's taking care of my partner in crime here, getting ready to put her away. But see, would you believe it? Is that where I do it? Is this where I say that the guitar is off? No, it's not. Sorry. All right, all right, all right. Sorry, I was I was getting excited, overexcited here. Ignore me. No, the piece of my soul. <laughs> you when the power outage occurred? Like I said, I was in the music store. My girl had been sounding a little off, so I had to get her back in tune. Isn't it true that you were actually hit in the hallway? You were actually in the hallway at that time? The hallway, you say. Why would I be in the hallway? You were waiting for Mr. Roll to come back from his patrol in the treasure room. Now that you've discovered that the treasure had been stolen, you are going to kill him. Lawyer man, just as always, so full of bull. Spewing noxious lies. Pull in the wool. Filthy liar. Through and through. And I ain't never ever gonna forgive you. Utter lies with no evidence. As always, his claims are just tenuous. That didn't even rhyme. Hey, nice, prosecutor. I'm picking up what you're throwing down. Someone stop their jam session, please. Hmm. You've made your assertion clear, defense, but your argument is rather unsubstantiated. That's not good. <laughs> What's so funny, piece of love and understanding? <laughs> Nevertheless, the possibility is still there. You can't deny the witness could have killed the victim under cover of darkness. Yes! You're forgetting one very important thing. Huh? Heh, heh, heh. It seems you've forgotten that the outage happened by the chance, not design. Oh, that's right. Oh, that's right. I did forget about that. It's not like the witness planned the outage so he could take advantage of the darkness. And without darkness, it would have been hard to sneak up behind Mr. Roll and kill him. You're right. Even I would notice someone coming up behind me. Well, Defense, what do you have to say about that? What can I say about that? Mr. Wright, your claim is completely without merit. Unless you would argue that the witness somehow magically made the outage happen. Well, I mean, he was near the breaker. Maybe not magically, but... Wait, that's it. I contend the witness could have made the power outage happen. With no magic necessary. What? 
you have theory defense. All he had to do was make use of something shown in this diagram. The breaker. Take that! The witness was in the storeroom. The circuit box is on the storeroom end of the hallway. There's nothing really magical about turning off the breaker, wouldn't you say? Mm. Nice try, but that theory doesn't hold water, lawyer man. And why not? You're saying I turned the breaker off and then snuck up on Roll and hit him? In pitch black darkness, no source of light whatsoever? Is that what you're saying? Um, well, actually, there is a source of light. And I've been wondering about this for a while. Ha <laughs> With the lights off, the hallway is blacker than a hundred midnights. You can't see the hand in front of your face. How can anyone commit murder like that? Unless it's someone standing right in front of the victim like the accused. I hate it when he's right. But I can't just let his point stand. Well, maybe the victim was holding something that served as a guide. A guide through the darkness? Something. That's more than a little vague, wouldn't you agree? You ain't gonna move this room with a half-baked hunch like that, bro. You gotta hit him hard. Really make him feel it, you hear me? Just like my verse, baby. Woo! <laughs> well, I'm afraid I don't understand the witness's lyrics very well either. But in a trial, your arguments have to be clear and precise. Let's see some of the clarity and precision now, defense. Uh-oh. What do I do? Can you present to us something that could have served as a guide to the darkness? I can. Yes, I can. Because there has to be something. Right. His his method of bluffing is just like, it, there has to be something. So I'm gonna bluff until I find it. It works. All right, let's see what you have to fence. What could the victim have been holding that served as a guide through the darkness? Why, the treasure box, of course. It glows in the dark. Take that! I believe the victim was holding the treasure box. Hmm? Huh? Huh? Have you gone mad? Well, the box glows in the dark, so you could use it as a sort of beacon. Right? But why in the world would the victim be holding the treasure box? Uh, oh, well, because your guess is as good as mine. If he was holding the treasure box, he wouldn't have accused Albie of stealing it. What is this lawyer talking about? Nonsense and lies it again. Just give him the death penalty already. Is there no way to win them over? Defense. Are we going to be needing those tongue shears after all? No, your majesty. Yeah, man. Do it, do it. Then we can jam out to this lawyer shrieks of pain. Ha ha ha. Better get those screams of agony out loud now, lawyer man. While well, you still have a tongue to scream with. You don't really need your tongue to scream. I, uh, guess I'd better come up with a reason. No pressure or anything. That's where the bluff comes. As to why the victim was holding the treasure box, it can easily be explained as thus. Brain, don't fail me now. What reason could the victim possibly have to be holding that treasure box? Oh! Because he noticed that the... Oh. Wait a second. I was gonna say because he noticed that the treasure was gone from inside of it. But the box glows, and the treasure was gone from inside of it. But now I'm intrigued. He was the thief? That's a possibility. I hate to say it, but. Gee, I just happened to stumble upon in the last choice of this particular game, uh, 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 choice thing here. Multiple choices. But I think it just might be the answer. And it would turn this whole trial upside down. But he was, wasn't he yelling at Albie for stealing it? Hello, defense. Are you still with us? 
Let's hear this easy explanation you promised. No, it's not easy. Isn't it possible that it was because the victim himself was the thief? The victim? The thief? <laughs> what kind of bull are you spewing now? Your Majesty, this guy's off his rocker. If the victim was the thief, everything we've learned so far would all make sense. And it would give us a completely new way to interpret the victim's actions. After the morning dance of devotion, Mr. Roll went out to the treasure room. He grabbed the box that contained the treasure and started to take off with it. But then he ran into Albie on the great stairs. That's why Mr. Roll pulled his gun on Albie. Oh, we were wondering about that. Then when the blackout occurred... Mr. Roll was bludgeoned to death in the darkness. This explains why the victim would be holding the glowing treasure box in the dark. And how it would have been possible for someone other than the accused to kill him. Have any idea what you're saying? You're unbelievable, lawyer man. I think you've lost it. <laughs> That's the craziest thing I've ever heard. Roll, trying to roll the temple. That devout believer, that pious Uranist. I won't allow you to disparage the victim's departed soul with unfounded allegations. I hope you're prepared to back up your claim. Uh, of course, your majesty. Oh, really? In that case, can we assume you have proof? Uh, proof, huh? Do I have any proof? I can't back down now. Yes, I have proof in my dreams. Wait, let me look at that picture again. Because his hand... No, yeah, because it's... It's not really proof. His hand is bloody. Proof that Mr. Roll was the thief may have been left behind on a certain piece of evidence. Okay. Very well. Let's see your evidence and be ready to stand behind it. The prince fingerprints doesn't like anything at this point. Any proof, something that would have been involved with the theft. I still have some trace of evidence left on it. So, the the, the... the box. Right? Because it was forced to open. So if the box has his fingerprints on it? Right? Is that what we're going for here? I think it is the box again. Take that! The defense would like to examine the treasure box. There might be trace evidence on it that would show the victim had held it. Might. You'd better hope to turn up something more definitive than that defense. Yes, sir, your majesty. Very well. Bailiff, bring the treasure box. We finally get to have it! Oh, that means we won't be able to open it. We know how to open it. There you are, defense. You're free to examine it. If I don't find someone now, my entire argument up to this point would be blown. Plus, there's that little matter of the old tongue shears. I have to find something. I just have to. I don't know why this case is not two parts. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> They're just doing all of the things. Every other case, every other first case of the game, since the first game, has been two parts because they're longer. Now to make sure I remember how to do this. We rotate. Mm -hmm. Zoom in and out. Yep. And get to turn around. And always touch reset to return to its initial state. So should I re enter this box carefully? And touch anything of interest to check it out in detail. Okay. Alright, let's 
zoom in. Just the lock. It was forced open. I don't really see anything else of note about it. So there's a lot of blood here. Oops. Ah. I'm clearly not doing this right. Hmm. The lid of the box was forced open. But while the victim was holding the box, the lid must have been closed. I'll try closing the lid too. What? You locked it! So? What's the big deal? I thought you can open it with that key you're wearing. Y yeah, I can. No sweat. Then why is there a bucket load dripping off you over there? Dr dripping off you over there. I think I'd like to open this box back up again. Could you lend me your Magatama key? Sure. Okay, let's see. Where's the keyhole? Well, it's the Magatama key. So wouldn't it go in the hole above the Magatama mark? Huh? It won't open. Would you look at that? The thief must have busted the lock when they forced the box open. Really? I'm not so sure about that. In any case, I better take another good look. I have to find proof that the victim was holding this box. Is that a handprint? It's a handprint! This blood stain shows the outline of a hand! Yeah, but wasn't the box the murder weapon, too? Wouldn't that be the thief's hand? Or not the thief, the murderer's hand? Could this be what I've been looking for? Your Majesty, take a look at this! There's a blood stain here that outlines the shape of a hand. Really, let me see that. Oh my, you're right! Now I'm getting somewhere. I believe the blood stain is an outline of the victim's hand as he was holding the box. What? So what was he hit with? Oh, I know what he was hit with. Even as he was being struck, he held tight to the precious treasure box. After all, he'd gone through a lot of trouble to steal it. I know what he was hit with! The blood from his he head w bleh. The blood from his head wound splattered across the hand. It his hand and onto the box. Yes. That's why his hand is covered in blood. Your Majesty, don't let yourself be taken in. It's just more of his lawyerly deceit. What do you mean? Miss Wright, where is your proof that the outline is that of the victim's hand? What? I should have seen this coming. Either show proof or prepare to meet the shears. Or you could save us all some time and bite your tongue and now out now and submit it instead. Jeez. That I did not see coming. Well, defense, how about it? Do you have proof that the outline is of the victim's hand? What would the proof of something like that even be? That's why his hand was bloody. It's the picture. Right? It's gotta be. Take that! I've got it. This is the evidence that's going to save my beloved tongue. Mr. Payne, despite your claims about my forked tongue, it just so happens I have the proof you require. You do. It's right here in the crime photo. It is? Where? Defense, please point it out. <laughs> it's like, don't just choose the photo. You need to understand why you're choosing the photo. Take that! Mr. Payne, take a good look at the victim's hand. See this? That's blood. What? Oh, it won't be fingerprints because he's wearing gloves. If we place Mr. Roll's hand inside the bloody outline... Y you think the blood on his hand would complete the, sh the splatter? Exactly. There goes nothing. And if they do form one complete splatter, it would prove my theory correct. <clears throat> the, the victim really was holding the box. I'm willing to bet my life on it. Oh, you are. The defense reasserts that the victim was the thief who stole the treasure box. 
You can't be serious. I'm always turning something around here. <laughs> Wait, is this hair attached to his crown? I, I protest. There's, there's no way they would ever match up. I assert that it's patently possible for. Ow! Talk about tongue karma. Sounds like it's just a bit his. What's the matter, Mr. Payne? Did you forked tongue get tangled up in there? Or were you trying to submit your own tongue to the board? Why you? Mm. Never tell if the gallery is on my side or not. Now. I can hardly believe it. Apparently, not everyone, not everything out of the defense's mouth is a bluff. <laughs> of course not, Your Majesty. This tongue doesn't lie. And I'd like to continue to use my tongue in the future, too, if you wouldn't mind. Never has to know it really was bluff. No, not Mr. Roll. I can't believe it. I'm sorry, Albie. I know it's upsetting news. He must have needed the money badly, probably to support his family. After all, he even gave up his dream of becoming a monk to help them. Oh, so that thing Mr. Roll would say to me... Yeah. He's probably warning you not to end up a thief. <laughs> Mr. Roll! Objection! N now wait just one minute. If the victim was the thief and he was holding the treasure box, then that means Mr. Roll was holding the murder weapon when he was killed. Oh, that's a very good point. It doesn't make much sense, does Objection! it? Objection! If the victim was holding the treasure box, it couldn't have been the murder weapon. Which means the real murder weapon must have been something else. The real murder weapon? Was something else? The blood was thought to have gotten on the box when the box was used as a weapon. But it turns out that it wasn't the case. The blood splattered onto the treasure box the victim was holding. When he was struck with the real weapon, that's what really happened. Isn't that right, Mr. Andestanden? Oh, right, him. Are you insinuating I'm the one who used this real weapon? Are you saying I'm wrong in my understanding? Ha 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 ha. You got me riled up, lawyer man. I feel a song coming on. Oh boy, another testimony. Another sing songy testimony. Looking for a weapon that just don't exist. Pathetic lawyer man. Drop into the abyss. Oh, good. <laughs> okay. Spigwell lawyer man. Yo, you make me sick. You can disappear just like a magic trick. Worthless lawyer man done in by a weapon. If you, miserable wretch. We beckon. He gotta, he gotta stop it, man. Chill, dude. Yeah! I know I don't need to remind you, Defense, that your life is on the line. I know, Your Majesty. Yet you're prepared to risk it on this mere idea of a real murder weapon. Death to the lawyer! This is it. The moment of truth. I can't back down. Not now. Yes, Your Majesty, I am. I am confident that the real murder weapon does indeed exist. Shiny guy. That's a bold claim, Mr. Wright. Now let's see you back it up. Show us which piece of evidence points to this real murder weapon. Oh, gladly. If I knew which one it was. What would somebody like understand and use to bludgeon someone? I know, I know. I've been ta talking about it the entire time. Now the defense, please submit your evidence to the court. <laughs> yeah, let's see it, lawyer man. I've been saying it this entire time. Take that! I love when it fades to black. What I'm about to present is really nothing more than a possibility. But this thin thread is all I've got. 
Allow me to direct the court's attention to this photo of this, the morning dance of devotion. That photo? How is that going to help you, Mr. Wright? There's something about it that doesn't sit right with me. Oh yeah? And what's this something, huh? This thing here is odd, to say the least. Take that! Mr. Understanding, why is the instrument you're holding different from the one you're playing in this photo? Would you look at that? They're completely different shapes! I believe you said your Dalmalan was your one and only? Well, Mr. Understanden, why do you have to what do you have to say to that? <laughs> I got nothing to say. Then allow me to answer for you. They're different because one in the photo is no longer in playable condition. Not after you used it to bludgeon Mr. Roll to death. Oh, he's sweating now. My old partner wasn't doing so hot, so I brought her sister along, that's all. Not big deal, lawyer man. In that case, please submit your old Domelon to this court as evidence. Too bad. Too late. I got rid of her yesterday. You what? Burned her up with the rest of the trash. Ashes to ashes, baby! Ha ha! No! He's already destroyed the evidence! And I see more trash right here in this court that needs to burn. Lawyer trash! Ha 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 keeps sending me down below here. Now there's no proof to show! Oh, come on! That was pathetic! Your agony can sound better than that. Where's that great scream of yours? This, this can't be how it ends. I think I've heard enough. It seems the defense is unable to produce the evidence it needs to prove this assertion. But your majesty, that's only because the witness destroyed it! Evidence is everything in court. Don't tell me you've forgotten this most fundamental principle of the, our profession. Without sufficient proof. Your claim that Mr. Understanding is the murderer is no more than conjecture. <laughs> There's the pained expression I've been looking for. By the way, there seems to be one more thing you're forgetting. What is it now? You accused Mr. Understanding of being a thief. But the real thief turned out to be the victim. That Mr. Understand's purported motive for murder goes out the window. So does Albie's. Great point, prosecutor. You tell him. If I'd been there, I'd have just collared roll and gotten the treasure back. Yeah, why did he kill him? There wasn't any reason for me to kill him. Now was there? Uh, there's no good counter argument to that. Sounds to me like Mr. Understandin has been completely wrongfully accused. Unfortunately, as it may be, I think it's time to hand out the verdict in this case. Not good. Not good. Defense, I trust you understand what you yourself will receive for taking on this case. Death, 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 <laughs> oh my gosh. Death, 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 death. Uh, what do I do? The murder weapon's been destroyed. Now I've got no motive. Poor Albie will be convicted. And I'll lose my life too. Mr. Wright, you've wasted this court's time and disparaged everything we hold sacred. We should charge you with least majesty. In addition to the crime of abetting the, the accused. Yeah. You should pay for desecrating my good name. Goodbye, lawyer man. It's time for you to do some repentant in the twilight world. is guilty of sin. I just know it. He must have had some reason to kill Mr. Roe. But what? Maybe he still wanted it. Maybe he's still a thief. Come on, people. Let me hear you scream and shout. 
death to, to the lawyer. <laughs> Time to take this lawyer trash out! Exterminate! Annihilate! Exterminate! Annihilate! The thing to do at a time like this is to turn my thinking around. I shouldn't be trying to figure out what Endostan's motive was. I should be thinking about what kind of situation would give him a motive. Did you steal it, he said. Yeah, exactly. He asked about stealing it. Steal what, then? If it wasn't the treasure box... We know that Mr. Roll was the thief, and that he had gotten his hands on the box. The treasure inside of the box? So then why? Why in the world did he ask Alvi that question? That's what I've been wondering! I thought the treasure box would have prompted him to. Okay, was it already open? Did he grab it? He wasn't the thief, he just grabbed it to show that it was empty broken into? Defense! What's gotten into you? Now I get it! Now it all makes sense! Like, Polunka, man, what you trying to say? Muttering and squealing to yourself sounds like you're not something loose upstairs. Your Majesty! Please hold off on your ruling for just a little while longer. Don't tell me you're going to start begging for your life now. N no, Your Majesty, that's not it. It's just that I realized something important. We've been operating under a serious misconception this whole time. A misconception, you say? That's right. A, mistake no a mistaken notion about the treasure box. Could this really be true? If so, there's still a lot to figure out. Very well, let's hear what you have to say. Thank you, Your Majesty. Your Majesty, this is just more of his nonsense. He's just stalling for time. This is your last chance, defense. The second I find it really is nothing but nonsense. No amount of begging will stay my hand. Understand? Yes, Your Majesty. Hmm. We all know this is just going to be another one of your stupid bluffs. Now, the defense, what's the misconception you mentioned? The, the thing we didn't realize about the treasure box was that... It was empty. What if the treasure box is already empty from the start? What? What? Uh, please recall that when Mr. Roll ran into Albie on the great stairs, he asked the boy a question. Did you steal it? Also recall that Mr. Roll was holding the treasure box at the time. So why then did he ask Alvi the question that he did? That is a bit peculiar, isn't it? Not at all, Your Majesty. Now once you realize that by the time Mr. Roll got the treasure, got to the treasure room, the treasure box was already empty. I beg your pardon. Mr. Roll suspected that Albi had gotten to it first. Which is why he confronted all of you when he ran into the boy on the stairs. Objection. But how would the victim have known the treasure box was empty? He didn't have any way of opening it! Objection. He doesn't open it. It's a year the victim had the duty of carrying the treasure box to the palace. He would have been able to tell by the weight when he lifted that the box was empty. I see, yes, I suppose he would have been able to tell, wouldn't he? Oh, okay. I can- I'll buy that. Mr. Roll most likely decided to at least steal the empty box. It's an important historical artifact in and of, a, in and of itself, after all. Ah, but what's your point, Mr. Wright? What does any of this have to do with Mr. Understandit? My point is this. Gave Mr. Understand a motive to murder the victim. A motive? Mr. Understand and keeping the treasure safe is one of your duties, isn't it? So if anyone had found out that the treasure was missing, you would have been accused of incompetence. 
And from the moment Mr. Roll discovered that the treasure was gone, his fate was sealed. Because you decided then that he had to be silenced forever. But that's absurd! <laughs> they always laugh. Can you believe the stuff that comes out of this guy's mouth? This is all just a colossal joke! So then, what really happened to the treasure? It had been stolen long before this incident occurred. By Miss... Mr. Ple by Mr. P's love and understanding himself. Mr. Wright, will you stop at nothing to accuse Mr. Understanding? Your Majesty, please don't listen to these trumped up charges. The defense is grasping. The treasure box can only be opened with a key Mr. Understanding holds. Who else could have stolen the treasure? As I said, the accused stole the treasure by forcing open the box. Your Majesty, I can call for a swift rolling. I'm not ready to give my verdict yet. What? The defense has successfully presented a new possibility to this case. Yes, finally, a tiny shred of hope. Mr. Edison, would you care to make any statements in response to defense's claims? Bull! My noggin's a rage cage and it's ready to explode, baby! Instructor, I'm standing. Please calm yourself. I'm not gonna take it. No, I ain't gonna take it. I did fully watched over that treasure with pride. And now I'm getting accused of stealing it? This lawyer is a lying scumbag. Yeep. You better believe I got something to say. Open up your ear holes, sheeple. Let's rock! Death to the lying lawyer! Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Anything new? Oh boy, okay, testimony. Alright, okay, it's not over yet. Oh my goodness. Ugh, alright. Here we go. Steal the Founder's Orb, me. I did it. This line lawyers insults no no limit. All this time I guarded the orb faithfully. Sacred duty to the Holy Mother. Easy to see. Hands unclean, the accused did the deed. Forced the box open, no key did he need. Lion lawyer, condemn him. Kick him, throw him, into a prison zone. Into prison. All right, we've now heard from both sides. Either the treasure box was forced open by the accused, as the witness claims, or Mr. Understand opened it, understand and opened it, as the defense claims. Defense, this is your last chance to cross-examine the witness. Yes, your Majesty. If you are unable to prove your assertions by the end of this cross-examination. Then the DC Act will come into play and both you and the accused will lose your lives. I understand. If for death it all comes down to this. Mr. Wright. Don't worry, Albie. I'm here to defend you. I promise it'll be alright. Thank you. I believe in you, Mr. Wright. I know you can win this for us. And after we win, we can go see Miss Maya. Together! It's a deal. I can't let Albie down. I have to win this trial. Somehow I have to prove that only understanding could have stolen the treasure. Do your worst, lawyer trash. It's your requiem. Last song you ever hear in this mortal coil. The argument that the or orb was already gone before the murder fits all the facts. Hmm, it's no use even talking to you. Where's your proof that I stole the orb? Huh, lawyer trash? 
that's right, I don't have any proof. Yet. But I'll find some. Hold it! Your sacred duty, huh? The problem with that is that I don't think you really are a true believer. Why you? How dare you question my faith? It's downright insulting! <clears throat> I'm not trying to insult you, but I can't suspend logic either. You wormed your way into the temple with the intent of stealing the treasure, didn't you? I've had all the insults I can take out of you. Lawyer trash. But you're the only one who can open the treasure box. You just keep on arguing the same old lie. I sing the truth, hear my battle cry. Hold it! The defendant didn't force the box open, that's a lie. In fact, you're the one who opened it, isn't that right? <laughs> Come on. You just saw for yourself, didn't you? The lock was busted on account of the box being forced open. Oh, yeah? Well, there's proof right there! Uh, score one for the metalhead. Look, the accused really didn't try to force his way into the box. Then how do you explain why the lock was busted and wouldn't open for up for you earlier? Hmm, do I explain why the box wouldn't unlock earlier? Different way to open it! I've been saying this. But there's a different way to open the box! What are you talking about? There's a secret trick to opening it, to protect its contents from being stolen. And you're the only one who knows how it works, isn't that right? Are you for real? You've been watching too many movies, lawyer man. Ah, so you're one of those tourists. Honestly, Mr. Wright, did you come expecting magic and mystery around every corner? I'll have you know, defense. The Kingdom of Karain is not some sort of fantasy fun land. It's true I don't have any real grounds to make that assertion. Yes. Oh yeah, I feel another song coming on. A little number about a crazy lawyer with wild, fantastic ideas. The real method to open the lock, you say? Delusional, man. There ain't no other way. Ah, a new verse. Please do add it to your testimony, Mr. Understand. Haha, <laughs> yes, please do. Because this is what I'm going to get you on. Dragon Tiger, founder of Resurrection by the Tradition of the Butterfly, embraces the Matama, the favor of the orb is bestowed. So, do I press it first or do I present? Objection! I press it first. <laughs> mm hmm. Yeah. Mm hmm. Nope. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. It's fine. I'm not gonna die. It's fine. I just I know what I'm doing. Okay. Press first, then present. Always press first and present. I know this. Why am I making these rookie mistakes? Delusional am I? We'll see about that. Wild ideas. That's called delusion. Mixed up lawyer drowning in confusion. Indeed, the defense's sinful wrongdoing has made him lose touch with reality. Let's hear it. What'll it be? For the sinner's flood of fancy. Nothing, because I'm not the delusional one. I just know there's gotta be some secret trick to opening the treasure box. Oh, really? And where exactly is the secret hidden? Aha! There it is. The box. The treasure box. Yeah? And where in the box is the secret exactly? I thought that far ahead. It's the carvings! There's definitely something going on there. Are you sure? You're sounding a little desperate, defense. De desperate! Not at all, your magistrate! The carvings of the, the accused snuck. The carvings the accused snuck in to see, even though it's forbidden, I might add. Witness, can you tell us anything about these carvings on the box? Of course! Said Monk, I know all about them. 
Harvest is depicted with Karainese butterflies that carries a soul to the Twilight Realm. They were made in around the 7th century. I see. Could you please have that information to your testimony? Press first. Press first, and then present. Karainese butterfly from the 7th century. Carries the Matama, so elementary. Yeah! Ah, oh, but I want to present it so bad. Because it actually says the words. Press first, then present. I believe this butterfly design concealed some sort of secret. Oh, yeah. Why don't you check it out for yourself, then? Smug look on his face. I think I'll do just that, Your Majesty, if I could. Hmm. Nothing unusual here. Well, defense, what have you discovered? Uh, I'm afraid I haven't discovered anything, Your Majesty. Here, I'll return it out. I told ya! Didn't I tell ya? <laughs> then, in that case, there must be some secret trick to the key. Haha, <laughs> now you're suspicious of the key, are ya? There's just no reasoning with this man. The accused forced to lock open, there's no other explanation. That's right. He desecrated the box by opening it without using the Matama key. Oh, that's the Matama. So... So should he... The butterfly should move a certain way to hold the Matama? I'll sing it as many times as I have to get through the thick lawyer's skull. Only the Matama key unlocks the treasure, force it, and reap the founder's displeasure. But the key didn't open it. For the forgetful defense's sake, could you please add that to your testimony? Oh, so you like this little number better, do you? Let's see. Should I have him swap in this statement? No. I'm okay with that, thanks. Oh, you're taking the lyrics as is, are you? Fine. Get back and listen to the rest of your requiem in peace, then. Okay. It's... It's gotta be. Right? Objection! Oh my gosh! What do you want from me, game? Then make him talk about the. No, oh, now it's giving me consult options because I failed so many times. Hold it. It's like, hey, you need help. Uh, I'll figure it out. Yeah, no, I should've just let him replace it after Phoenix was all like, wait, what did he say? Have him change it. I believe the witness just made, sang a very important statement. Like it switched into his testimony. Very well. Witness, if you would. If I have to, cover it into your brain, lawyer man. This is the last cross-examination, though. He keeps telling me that. Not even the Magatama key can open it. Objection! Oh my gosh. Game. What do you want from me? Okay. Alright. I am down to my very last soul here. I'm gonna save it. And I'm going to press... And I'm going to apologize for whatever this is that's happening here. There must be some secret trick to this key. 
Oh yeah? And what exactly is the secret trick? What's that smug look for? Um, maybe something like... It can change shapes? Wow, man, that's some wild imagination you got there. Give you credit where credit's due, you can daydream like a champ. Just like any Magatama, this key is made of translucent material. One look and it's pretty obvious it can't change shapes. Yeah, I wasn't really so on that one myself. I felt like there was something odd about it. I understand it says something just now. I think I better take another look for the evidence. Yeah, like the fact that it said that it couldn't open it. Not even the Magatama key can open it. Oh. Oh. I see what it's saying. <sighs> it's because they're calling it a Matama, not a Magatama. Objection! I don't have any words. Just a minute, M Mr. Understanding. You just called your key the Matama key, didn't you? But didn't you originally say it's called the Magatama key? God! Oh, he just got hit in the face with a string. The Matama key? What's that? I don't know, Your Majesty. But apparently, it's a rather crucial question. Ooh, what's the big deal? So I said the wrong thing. So what? Simple slip of the hung. An A for effort, Mr. Wright, but your grandstanding betrays your desperation. I'm afraid a small slip of the tongue like that adds absolutely nothing to your argument. What say you defense? Is it an important detail? Judging by Anna Stanton's reaction. I'd say it's everything my argument needs. Yes, your majesty, it's very important. The key is apparently not the Magatama key, but rather the Matama key. And I believe this discrepancy holds great significance for the defense. Nah, man, just a meaningless mistake. Insignificant! <laughs> You're riding the crazy train to nowhere, lawyer man. Your Majesty, please don't pay the defense any heed. It's all nonsense. To tell the truth, I'm not really clear on what the defense is driving at myself. However, I am eager to find out. What?! Defense, you will explain yourself like your life literally depends on it. Because it does. Now then. Is the name of the key an important detail? Yes, it's an absolutely important detail. I think. Because the Matama key is connected to the Founder's Orb. Now I use the lyrics. I see very well. In that case, please show the court to the grounds on which you are basing this claim. But just in case. Just, uh... Just a little precaution. You know, in case I die. The grounds, your majesty. You can't, of course, show grounds. Can you not defense? Uh, of course. What else can I say? I have to come up with something. Anything. If it's just a bluff. The Matama key. Matama. There has to be something somewhere that ties Matama and the orb together. Don't keep me waiting, defense. <laughs> My poor one little lifeline. <laughs> now, will you believe me? What's that? The Song of Ceremony? All this time, the answer was right there in front of me. It's right there in the Song of Ceremony performed during the Dance of Devotion. Your Majesty, the Song of Ceremony tells of the treasure of the founder of Curanism. But hidden within its lyrics is the secret behind how to really open the treasure box. Uh, Holy mother! <laughs> but how can that be, defense? The Song of Ceremony contains the following lyrics. When the butterfly embraces the Matama, the favor of the orb is bestowed. I believe the Matama here refers to the Matama key. Well, yes, it's just the same word, but that doesn't mean. We've been calling this key the Magatama key, and that's why I inserted the key into the lock with the Magatama design on it. But that was obviously not the right way to use it. And 
I suppose you know the right way. I do, Your Majesty. To use the key properly, you have to first... Oh, you have to flip it, because it's, uh, Matama, which is, like, what my symbol is. What, what my one solitary symbol is, which is up, upward, right? And, like, it points upward. Because a Matama is... Oh, no, it isn't. Flip it vertically or flip it horizontally. I'm scared. Let me look at this thing. It needs to be on the butterfly. Okay, okay, yes, flip it, flip it. Flip it. Okay. But wait. backwards. I don't think it matters. Flip it vertically and then flip it horizontally. If you turn the Magatama shape upside down like this. Okay, there it goes. Alright. I thought it meant flip, like, like, flip. But it didn't. It turned. It becomes a Kirini symbol of the soul. In other words, a Mitama. Oh my, you're absolutely right. But now what? What do you do with it? It's too big to fit in the lock that way. Um... Heh, <laughs> I knew he was just bluffing. Bluffs and lies are the only tolls of his trade, after all. There must be some other place this key fits, but where? Let's see, what were the words of the song ceremony again? When the butterfly embraces the Matama, the favor of the orb is bestowed. The guitar key actually be used. There he is. <gasps> hey, look! Look at look at that right next to the butterfly, right here. Ooh, I have to say I like the little like it's not really anime cutscenes, but it's like three D cutscenes that keep going on. Like look at that. <laughs> Huh? M my goodness! The treasure box, it really opened! No way, man! Why? No! And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the real secret behind the Song of Ceremony. It's the true key to opening the treasure box. Can we put this to an end yet? This case has been going on forever, give me a break! I've had to pause several times! <laughs> it's all over, Mr. Payne. Ow, so! Let's say someone was fooled into trying to force the front-facing lock open. Sadly for them, it won't budge. It's because the lock is, after all, just a decoy. Then what you're saying is... Neither the victim nor the defendant would have been able to open this box. They therefore had no way of stealing the treasure. The only one who could have stolen it is the one man who knew about the Matama key. Peace, love, and understanding. But I'm not done yet. Please recall the scene of the crime. On the floor by Mr. Roll's body? It was the very unlocked and very open treasure box. Only someone who knew how to open the box could have left it in that state. Yeah, you're a fool to do that. And so, there can only be one true culprit. Admit it, Mr. Understand, and you're the one who killed Mr. Roll. Breakdown time. Uh, uh. Speakers are getting really wobbly. Are they gonna fall on him? Oh.
Oh, that took way too long. I'm so sorry, guys. Thanks for sticking around. This one was nuts. Curse him. It's all his fault. Why do you have to try and steal a treasure? The gimmick is fun. It's just this first case just went really, really long. Why'd I have to spot him with that box? I'm on my way to the storeroom after the morning dance. It's his fault I had to cause that blackout and clock him good. Hmm. I couldn't let my secret get out. Nobody could know the treasure box was empty. I lose my position said monk. Who knows what else they do to me? I couldn't let. I had to. I had to stop him. What a shocking development. Yeah, this is a. You know, while we're going on forever anyway, I might as well talk about this. This is a place where they've never had a defendant go free and be declared not guilty, so... Whew, I can scarcely believe it. Nothing like this has ever happened since the DC Act was enacted 23 years ago. 23 years ago. Interesting. Mm. No, my perfect unblemished record. Destroyed. The incredible pain. Ruined. No! Oh, he's completely bald. Gasp! Did the lawyer really win? I can't believe it! No way. This can't be happening. Wait, this can't be happening! Maybe that was it. Peace! I said peace! Honestly speaking, I'm just as shocked as everyone else. But the truth has been made known, so it's time for me to give my verdict. In the name of the Holy Mother. This court finds the accused. I'll be your guide. Not guilty. Peaceful butterflies. How pleasant. Who needs confetti? Ah. <laughs> it doesn't look bad. <laughs> Especially in the shades. <laughs> Boy, guys. <clears throat> I mean, I guess raising the stakes and like making it such a big deal, and making it such a such a fight, uh, has its merits here in this game because it's like, okay, this is the big, you know, you're fighting for your life here. But I don't know. I think uh, I think it's been long a long case. There's so quite an emotion. The people in the gallery show no sign of clearing out. I can't believe it! Not guilty! I'm still in shock. Can you believe that guy? I feel everybody's eyes on me. This can't be happening. It's impossible! Oh, holy mother, preserve us! The defendant lobby could make this uncomfortable. Mr. Wright! Oh, Albie! Thank you! Thank you so much for what you did for me! I'm just glad it turned out okay. It was touch and go there for a while. For a long while, Phoenix. I'm really sorry, Mr. Wright. I, I had a really hard time trusting you at first. It's okay, Albie. I know how unpopular lawyers are in this country. But how did it ever get this way from in the first place? Allow me to explain! At least, I wish I could explain. But I don't really know why. I never even questioned it before today. By the time I was born, all the lawyers were already gone. As far back as I can remember, verdicts have been based on her benevolence, bene her benevolence's insights. Right, Rafa, the royal priestess. Yeah, this trial went through so many parts. The gimmick is interesting, though. I do like the gimmick. I was scared of the gimmick, because I'm like, oh my goodness, am I gonna see, like, crazy 
things, but it doesn't get too graphic. For her part, I'm sure she really believes in what she says, but... Even with her benevolence as divination seances, lawyers are still necessary. Without proper defense, people could easily wind up receiving wrongful convictions. Mr. Wright! Shh! Huh? Don't say that so loud! People might think you're a, you're a rebel! You could be arrested! A rebel? That's right! One of those people going against our queen in the court system! They call themselves the Defiant Dragons! And they're led by a scary guy named Dirk! Oh, they were talking about Dirk earlier. They'll do anything to overthrow her eminence, even commit crimes! Dirk, I remember people in the gallery mentioning that name. The things you're saying sound a lot like the stuff they say. But you're not scary like that Dirk guy. I don't know who that is. Pardon the intrusion. Oh, hi. You. Yeah, you. I want to talk to you, see? Flight, is it? Right, sir. Phoenix Wright. And you are? I'm the Kuranese Minister of Justice. The name's Inga... Oh my gosh. Inga Karkul Kurain. Kurain. Right, Kurain. Kurain. Inga Karkul Kurain. I don't hear any puns on that. I oversee the whole legal shebang. I was watching that three-ring circus in there. <laughs> Is he like a 20s guy? <laughs> like, I'm, I'm just like the 20s newscaster kind of voice. I was watching that three-ring circus in there. You were? Well, the Minister of Justice. So he's in charge of the entire court system, Defense Culpability Act and all. Minister Inga! How are you, sir? Run along, mini monk. Grown ups are talking here. <laughs> yes, sir. Very sorry, sir. May I help you with something? Just wanted a good look at you. Guys like you aren't exactly a dime a dozen around here. Huh. Well, that I was eyeing you like I'm some kind of exotic creature in a cage. Oh yeah, might as well share this little morsel with you. Turns out Roll was a seasoned thief. Repeat offender, see? You repeat offender, see? <laughs> Had my men look into it. And they all found the booty he'd pilfered right there in his digs. But he seemed like such a nice man. Why, Mr. Roll, why? Because he was doing it for the family. What a mook. A, a mook? How can you say that? Yes, that kind of sob story gets you comic folk all misty eyed, huh? Anyway, another thing. I had my men check out that understanding fella, too. He wasn't the one with the sticky fingers. It's the insurgents. What? They put the squeeze on our head monk, apparently. So I gave up the founder's orb and tried to keep it hush hush. Wow, I see. Thank you for letting me know. Yeah, say, White. That was a cute little number you pulled off in my courtroom today, wasn't it? First not guilty rolling in 23 years. You're making waves, see? Stir in the pot. Catch my drift. Oh, uh, well, I... Yikes, I'm in for it now. <laughs> but thanks to that song and dance, we know our precious national treasure got nicked. So I'm gonna call it a wash and let's slide this time. But all I did was defend the accused. You do best to read between... You do, you do best to read between the lines here, chump. You're standing on the thin ice. Get my drift. Even a dirty, no good nick punk knows how to cash in his chips before the house steps in. Just with a favor, keep an eye on the path you're walking down. You never know whose toes you might be stepping on. This ain't your turf, buddy. Never forget whose soil it is you're standing on. I'll figure out his voice sooner or later. I don't remember this man. <laughs> I remember nothing of this game. <laughs> Yeah, because he was kind of scary, wasn't he? I do. I did remember I'll be your guide, though. I remember that name. And the Defense Culpability Act. I did remember that. I, or I, at least re I remembered that defense attorneys would take the same punishment as the as the uh, defendants if they're found guilty. Yeah, well, no use worrying about it. We have more important things to think about. 
such as when can we continue the sightseeing tour? Tour? Oh, any time, sir! We still have plenty of time until Miss Maya's training ends. And there are still lots more temples to see, and all kinds of local foods to eat. I can show you the natural beauty of the area, and the waterfalls used for... I haven't shown you the... Uh-huh. All right, all right, slow down, Albie. There's plenty of time. And when we're done with all that, we can go see Miss Maya together. Yeah, you bet. Maya, I wonder how she's doing. Oh, she's okay. Oh my goodness. That was such a long case, you guess. Oh. So, how about that not guilty, jerk? <laughs> I heard. Sounds like the winds of change are beginning to stir. <laughs> I don't remember. I remember like one little thing. Maybe two little things about the overarching plot of this story, but I don't really remember much. I'm sure that as it unfolds, things will be um things will ring some bells for me and I will uh remember things, maybe, as it goes along and I'll be like, oh, I remember that. But yeah. Um Ooh, they got the, the seance vision there. That's all be really scared and holding his hands up. Um <sighs> It's been a long one, guys. I'm not gonna keep you long. <laughs> uh I've pretty much said my piece. It was long. It was very long. It was probably unnecessarily long. Um there was a lot to uh, figure out with um, because it was a tutorial case and I am sh really shocked that it wasn't two parts I think that it should have been as much as I hate that the cases the first cases are two parts in those later games I think that it would have benefited from being two parts and not just one because that was really long like if you're just playing this and not recording it like you can you can stop at any time or whatever but like I'm recording it and you just had to watch through like three hours of this case all at once and it was a little tedious for me to do and like I said I had to take breaks in between like I had things to do <laughs> I couldn't play it all at once so um, it was a bit much especially whenever you knew who the killer was too um, and whenever you need to like put in those little nods to what's gonna happen in the future like whatever that 20s newscaster voice guy <laughs> That I'm gonna figure out. The guy with the cigar. Um, I already forget what his name was. Inga? Inga. Um, is, is implying. And then the whole thing with the rebels and Dirk, apparently, is a, uh, is a whole thing. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, the case itself. I love Albie. Albie is super cute. And he's just like, he's just a kid. You know? Like, you gotta defend him. He's so. He's just, you know, wonder-eyed little little nine-year-old boy, and accused of murder. Um, the case itself was, you know, it was all right. Um, we're we're <laughs> gonna move on. Um, luckily for me, anyway, or maybe unluckily because it's so early, but it feels like so much later because that case was so long. This is my favorite case of the game. The magical turnabout. This is the one that I've played more than once. So it's going to be a little fun. We're going to be back with Apollo and um, as you can see there in his silhouette. Oh, kind of a silhouette. You can kind of see the lines of his outfit. But anyway, um, again, I'm not going to hold you too long. Stay tuned for the next episode, which is going to be my favorite and I will be a little bit more cheery about it. <laughs> uh, I'll talk to you guys then. <laughs>